Hi, welcome to GameGo, where you can buy and sell used games. Would you like to pre-order the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare Hardcore Pack, complete with Dorito Mountain Dew Season Pass? Hey, what's up, man? Uh, I don't know, I gotta think about that, but right now I'm just here to trade these games in. Ah, trading in your PS4, I see. Well, you can get $100 towards a PS4 Pro, uh, $50 store credit, or $8 in cash. Ah, oh, no way, man. I'm not here to trade in the PS4, just the games inside it. Um... Okay, well, just eject that disc, and uh, by the way, all game trade-ins without their boxes, they're reduced by 50%. You know how it is. Hey, you're not taking me for an idiot, are you? I'm not here to trade in the games inside my PS4, like the disc. I'm here to trade in the ones on the hard drive, bro. The hard drive? You got it. They're digital games? Yes, why is this so fucking difficult to understand? Sir, you can't trade in digital games. Why the hell not? Steam's been doing it for years. You guys claim to be competitive with online retailers, right? Steam seems like a pretty major retailer to me. Yeah, well, how are we supposed to physically even take the games from you? How are we supposed to resell them? Hey, hey, listen, we- listen, listen. I'm the fucking customer. I don't give a fuck what you do with them after. You could put them on a finger drive, send them to the cloud. I don't know. Maybe pick up the phone and ask Valve. All I know is that your sign says buy and sell used games, Right. And here I got some fucking used games. Nowhere in that giant post out front does it specify physical fucking games only. Sir, it's implied that the games are physical. You can't trade in digital games. That's the cost of buying digital. Well, that's just bullshit, man. Your competitors are doing it. And if you don't get on the bandwagon, you guys are going to be closed up quicker than Babbage's and EB Games. Come on, man. I'm going to take my business elsewhere if you don't get this fucking straightened oh, up. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me call my manager. Hi, Chet. Yeah, I have a customer here trying to trade in some digital games. Yeah, digital. Well, he says if he won't do it, he's taking his business elsewhere. And you know that probably means A-M-A-Z-O-N. I can spell you now. Sir, I'm on the phone, please. Yeah, they're on his PS4. Yep, yeah, he's got it right here in front of me. What am I supposed to put... How am I even supposed to get him out of the... Okay, Chet. Yes, Chet. Okay. All right, bye. All right, I'm sorry about the mix-up, sir. Uh, We'll give you 50 cent store credit per game. All right, that's more like it. I'd like to pre-order the next three Madden games, please. All right, um, I got to get these games out of your PS4, so uh, just put your email, social security number, and blood type on this form. I got to go get the vacuum. Captain Mike M, welcome to episode 171 of the Gamers in Beta podcast. And before we get ready, I'd like to say that I'm very jealous of my co-host tonight because they have beer and alcohol in their homes and I do not. So I am a sad, very sad host. Oh, that's it? I thought there was more to that. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm Corey and I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> And this is Jay, and I am currently uh, have the doctor in the house, uh, Doctor McGillicuddy's, and I have him on ice, so you may hear a little uh, ice sloshing today. Jay's gonna be playing the role of Keith from the Forty Cast tonight. Welcome, Keith. <laughs> oh Lord, and I'm Sean, and I have nothing witty to say tonight. That was pretty witty. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and uh, and I'm Logan. Uh, coming over from the Indie Insider podcast, and uh, I drank myself to death at a wedding yesterday, so I'm uh, sticking with water tonight. Excellent. Welcome to the show, Logan. Uh, so Logan is also part of BagoGames.com. 
Uh, before we kick this off, Logan, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you do at Bago and what your new podcast is all about? Yeah, uh, so I am the senior reviews editor over at BagoGames.com, uh, and I, I pretty much just make sure that people there keep, you know, writing things about games and uh, you know reviewing games and telling us whether they're good or not, and uh, working with developers and publishers to make sure that they get their games covered. And also, I'm here because I want to talk about the Indie Insider podcast I'm doing with BlackShellMedia.com. They are a publishing firm of indie video games. But they also like to provide educational you know, resources for developers and gamers. And so I started a podcast with them called Indie Insider where I talk with indie devs about their awesome projects and their stories and their advice for other people and just anything awesome they want to talk about. So uh, we just launched. We have three episodes out right now. A fourth one comes uh, well, this Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, it's on iTunes, Google Play, you know, all the good places, and you should check it out. It's going to be really good. Now, is there a common theme when you talk to these indie developers? Do they say, hey, we love making games, but we wish we could have this, or we love making games for this platform? I know you're just sort of uh, new to this with talking to them, but is there a, a central theme yet as you discuss games and stuff? Uh, you, so the people that I'm reaching out to are usually people who – uh, I have a new project coming out or just released something new and want to talk about it. And I usually try to dive in a little bit deeper with them to hear stories about uh, the process of making this game or something interesting about them, how they got into development, uh, just kind of getting under the surface a little bit with them. And then also talking about things they've learned and uh, you know advice that they can share with you know developers out there and uh, – Everyone has something different to share and different stories. Everyone comes from different backgrounds and uh, has different experiences getting to where they are in the industry. So uh, the first three episodes were with people who are a little more established in the industry, have been around for a while, a few years. Uh, and this new episode that will air as of recording tomorrow, um, that's with a company that's brand new, which kind of offers this different perspective. So really just trying to get under the surface with that. Okay. If that makes sense at all. Definitely. And uh, can you tease us a little bit about maybe some of the developers you've talked with? Yeah. So when we did our launch, which was just last week, uh, we talked with uh, the team behind uh, – sorry, the team behind Bound, so Plastic. Um, that was that game that came out on PlayStation with the ballet dancer, the platforming. You may have seen that. Uh, also talking with Team 17. Uh, they were behind, you know, Worms and The Escapists and, uh, you know, all these other kind of indie games. Overcooked that just came out. Uh, yeah, they're a big publisher now, too. They moved out of just the uh, the developer side. So they have they have quite a bit of different games they're publishing now, don't they? They do, yeah. They actually just, I think today or yesterday, announced The Escapists, too. So they are uh, publishing things with other companies as well as, you know, Worms and their own stuff. So uh, the creative director of that company, Kevin Carthew, I talked to him and uh, – he had some really insightful stuff just about how their company has grown over the years. Uh, and tomorrow, this new episode is with a company called Hollow Robot. They just released Office Freakout on Steam, um, where essentially your character gets fired and destroys everything in the office in spectacular manner, in classic video game manner. Uh, but talking to them about the games they want to make, uh, how you know, there's some, some personal stories of of anxiety problems and social problems there and uh with them and how they're using that to make some you know awesome games in the future i look forward to it i love those team 17 guys man i've loved worms since like ps1 era those yeah. those guys are great and kevin's a guy that's been with them throughout all of that so uh that interview was really cool getting to hear you know his story over the last two decades of being with this company Excellent. Well, we're looking forward to uh, listening, and we'll certainly subscribe. Right, everybody? Everybody nod their head. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm already, I'm already Did you hear it? So thanks for playing. <laughs> well, Logan, again, welcome to the show. Uh, buckle in, because it's going to be a hell of a ride. If you've listened to us in the past, we um, tend to go on tangents now and then, but we'll try to stay on the tracks tonight. Uh, Destiny 2 coming to... The PC in 2017, as well as consoles. I guess the big news about that, I don't know if the, the going to PC is such uh, big news. You maybe would expect that and maybe a little shocked that Destiny 
Destiny 1 wasn't on PC. Um, but what is different is that your character probably is not going to be coming over. So you're going to lose everything you've invested in the game. So let me read some quotes for you. Uh, this is from some of the people insiders at Activision. No one is really putting their name to these quotes. Uh, it says, D2 is a completely different game. The Taken King was a reboot for Destiny 1 to fix small things. This is the overhaul to fix big things. And uh, in the Kotaku article, they say, uh, one of the things we'll be hearing often about Destiny 2 is play in destinations. This is going to be a new activity model that will revamp how Destiny's worlds functions. The plan is for Destiny's two planet areas to feel more populated with towns, outposts, and quests that are more interesting than the patrol missions you currently have in Destiny. So I know we are not the biggest uh, Destiny guys here, but the the exception of Jay. If Joe was on right now, he'd be... uh, making all sorts of moans and groans because Joe is anti-Destiny. And by the way, we do miss Joe Stay tonight. So I throw it out to you guys. How do you feel about Destiny 2 coming to the PC and possibly, again, this is just a rumor right now, speculation, that you will not be able to bring your character going forward? Can you believe it's been 10 years already? Because, you know... Wasn't Destiny supposed to be a ten-year experience? Wasn't that, wasn't that? I think the franchise, Corey. You, 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 <laughs> oh, you're being oh. so, you're being so simplistic now. My bad. My bad. One I is thought, ought to do. I thought that whole you know Destiny was a ten-year experience meant Destiny was going to be a ten-year experience, but I I just I don't understand the D. I guess I just don't get the D. <laughs> you don't Other get people much D get in the your D. Life? Not not enough. Not nearly enough. Big penis. Well, we are guys, so we only understand one D. So. <laughs> putting a second one in here is going to screw us all up. Anything more to say to that, Jay? Uh, yeah, it's going to be confusing. Um, just like every time they put out a new add-on to the current Destiny is confusing for many people. I mean, they change the currency, they change everything that's going around, they add new stuff, which is, I mean, it's good, and you got to learn it, and it changes it up. I mean, that's the reason that it's doing as well as it has for, what, two years now? Going on two years? Over two years? So, you know, I mean... It wouldn't be going as strong as it is. I can still go on my friends list and see a bunch of people playing. Um, and I still enjoy going in and playing. Um, you know, People make the jokes, especially on this podcast, about going on the same maps over and over again, which it's valid. But I still enjoy going in and playing with friends. It's probably my favorite co-op game at this point in time. I, I still don't like the uh, PvP stuff. But um, you know, as far as going and playing co-op with friends... Uh, it's still a ton of fun to go in and do that, even though you know the grind can be can be tough. But you know that's part of it, and that's what's kept people going is is trying to get those different weapons and trying to figure out the different stuff. And you know, so now, Sean, you don't have any consoles yet currently in your possession. Not yet, no. But you are a PC guy. How does this make you feel? Does this is this a game that was ever on your radar and was like, man, if I only had a console, I'd play this, but. You know, now it might be coming in late 2017 to PC. Something you are anticipating? Uh, let me think about that for a second. Uh, no, it's oh. not. All right. Nobody got time for that. <laughs> and Logan, what about yourself? Are you a Destiny guy? You know, I'm not a Destiny guy, but I will say this: on paper, this all makes sense to me. Separating this as you know a full-on sequel, Destiny Two, allows you, I guess, to kind of cut off from your old character this can be a totally different game and of course bringing it to pc that's that's where everything goes now right especially if you want the most high-end experience in terms of graphics things like that that's that's where it goes so on paper you know this at least all makes sense to me but again i'm not in that destiny world so well very interesting i think um no doubt activision has a uh, very successful franchise on their hands to go along with Call of Duty and Skylanders. Like Jay said, everybody is still playing this, or people who all along have played with it have not slowed down, and now that Rise of Iron is out, it seems like you go on your friends list and people are right back at it. So they have some sort of winning formula, no doubt about it. We'll see uh, if they change things in late 2017, uh, if that will upset the apple cart at all. Let's move on to Ubisoft, or as Jay likes to say, Ubisoft. All right. I think this is some great news here, but let's uh, 
get your opinions on this first. Uh, Ubisoft's editorial VP, Tommy Francois. I'm hoping that's how I pronounce it. I think he's French, so I'm going to stick with that. Sounds good. Uh, yep. Uh-huh. He's, he, in, in reference to Assassin's Creed and the Far Cry franchise, he says, we believe Alpha for these games needs to be one year before release. We're trying to achieve that. That's super fucking blunt. I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this. This is the goal we're going for. Alpha one year before, more quality, more polish. So if this means biting the bullet and not having an Assassin's Creed game or Far Cry in 2017, fuck it. He goes on a little bit more eloquently and says, we need the alpha available as early as possible. Because the more time we have for this, the more polish we have. The more time we can change, refine, swap systems, etc. You just can't take shortcuts. So I think... It's um, no surprise to us here that this would happen. I think we've talked about that before in past uh, episodes many moons ago that possibly Assassin's Creed would not be coming out this year. And I think this is uh, welcome news. It's about time a developer slash publisher wakes up and realizes that annualization of these games is going to lead to their ultimate demise. And um, I welcome this. I hope other people are listening and paying attention. And I expect these games to shine in 2018, if that's in fact when they're going to come out. Uh, Corey, I think you probably would agree. Yeah, I definitely think this is... Good news, everyone! Annualized franchise aren't good for anybody except short-term investors. Those are the only people who like to see annualized franchise, because they just run them into the ground, and then they're dead for a long time. And I mean, look at Tony Hawk. You know, that's the happened to the Tony Hawk series. So when you annualize a franchise, they just get worse to churn them out, you know, every mm. single year. So I Unless, would love to see – well, which one? Well, I was going to – you know, people are going to roll their eyes and say, oh, well, but I really think you can annualize a franchise if you do it the way Activision is doing with Call of Duty. You can argue whether the games are great or not or if it's your type of game, which more often than not is the problem, not the quality of the game, with the exception of – um the one that first came out in between 360 and the Xbox One that was garbage. Um, Ghost. They, Ghost, thank Ghost, you. Yeah. Um, but when you have three developers working on the franchise, you can annualize it because those developers are taking three years for that one game, right? So right now, Sledgehammer is working on a game, and um, the other developer's name escapes me right now. But there's two other developers working on their iterations of Call of Duty that are going to come out in subsequent years. But... I think that's really the only way you can do it. If it's going to be the same studio, it, it does get stale. It does get uh, boring and monotonous, and it's not good for anybody. Well, I Call, think- Call of Duty is like – they're great games. They're they're solid games. I would never fault them for being bad games. They're well done. They they check all the boxes. But that's the thing is they usually just check all the boxes. You know, They're not innovative. They're mm-hmm. never that different. And if they were, they would upset the fans. I get that. But like – I don't know. They're just they're just Call of Duty games. It's the Coors Light of, of video games. You know, they change the can, but it's the same formula every time. I certainly don't want to make episode one seventy one me grandstanding and say Call of Duty is different every time. But I would say, if you look at Advanced Warfare, uh, if you look at Blops Three, they did bring in some different stuff. Now, whether people wanted that stuff remains to be seen did people want all this sort of you know uh jumping in the air with the mech suits and things like that do people with the uh, latest game that's going to be coming out infinite warfare do people want to go to space i really think they're caught in a tough spot with either churning out the same typical game over and over again or then taking risk and then people saying well i didn't want to go to space you know they're sort of they're sort of in that position where i think they could they really couldn't win a position that comes from the annualization, I think. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think they're kind of in that corner because of that. But but again, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. If they don't put one out every year, then the fans are going to get upset about that. That's right. Those uh, meatheads need their uh, multiplayer every year, like clockwork. Uh, let's move on to some Battleborn. So this is another Kotaku article that I saw. And they were under the assumption that Battleborn, which is a underperforming franchise, I think we would all agree with that, that um, it's going to be coming free to play uh, later this year. And uh, Randy Pitchford took to Twitter and said this is uh, a reckless story about Battleborn, that going free to play is false. 
Uh, he says there are no plans to convert Battleborn free to play. We have some unannounced plans to do a trial version of the game that would be free and from which retail can be purchased along with DLC. <laughs> so it would be free to actually play, but we're not we're not free to play. <laughs> exactly. So the person, uh, Jason, I forget his last name. I want to say maybe Schroeder at Kotaku. I might have that wrong. Um, followed up, you know, with a direct tweet to Randy Pitchford. And he said, is this a time demo? You know, you say trial version. Does that just mean timed or, or a canned demo, so to speak? And he said, nope. You know, it's pretty much going to be a trial version of the game. You know, no limitations really. But um Get back to me in a couple months because we still have a lot of things to discuss about this, but it's not going to be just a demo. So um, interesting to see what Gearbox does because I do think this um, was unexpected that Battleborn did not take off. But, you know, they came out right at the time of Overwatch, and um, that's unfortunate. The, The franchise just has not done well. Jay um, mm. and and some of you other people here, I assume, have not purchased this game. Has anybody here purchased it? I'll take that as a no. Oh, crickets. Um, <laughs> I only played the alpha. So will this entice anybody now that the game's been out for a while and you've seen gameplay and stories or whatnot? Will anybody be uh, jumping in to check out a trial version or these types of games just uh, don't float your boat? I think it's a little too late. It's not really my type of game um and i think the people that would like it it's already been released and they've already passed on it and i don't think that this will uh garner much attention uh, i could be wrong maybe that going free to play would entice people to try it kind of with evolve on pc but um i think they've already passed on it just because uh you know they're already playing overwatch now this game came i want to say maybe may logan does that sound right may uh yes, I'm doing some some reading on it right now while we're talking about it. That sounds right, uh, yeah. but it did come yeah very close to that window with Overwatch, kind of like we mentioned. Yeah, so about five months. So clearly, Evolve went free to play, or their whatever they're doing now, they're offering certainly was well over a year later. Um, so this is just in the rumor stages, and certainly isn't free to play now, and doesn't seem to fit in the typical free to play um, offering like like we're thinking. Um, Corey or Sean or, or Logan, anybody thinking of, hey, this is a game I was looking at, but it was just too much money to give right, at, right up front, and if they're going to come out with some sort of trial and then I can pay later type deal, does it entice anybody? Ain't nobody got time for that. Thank right, you. Corey, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Logan, how about yourself? Uh, so, you know, just looking, and you obviously compare this to Evolve, and that's just an easy comparison. And actually, this kind of ties into a future interview I have with Indie Insider. It's a theme where developers try to find ways where if their game doesn't hit right from the start, they try to reinvent it in some way with you know DLC or with uh, reinventing how people uh, approach it, how they reach consumers. Um, you know, you look at Destiny, like we just talked about, the Taken King uh, really just revamped what that game was and kind of reinvigorated it. Can they do that with Battleborn uh, after everything with Overwatch and just kind of being in the shadow of that? I don't know. I don't know if making it free to play uh, would do that. I don't know if a free trial would do that. But at least they're trying. I guess it shows some sort of effort on their part to try and make this game um, relevant in some fashion moving forward. Uh, it's something to keep an eye on, it, if nothing else. Oh, yeah, Sean. I mean, that's Sean, the do luck think- to him. What's that? I was just going to say best of luck to him. Like I, it, it is, uh, I hope it's not too little too late just for the studio's sake, but I mean, bad timing and they, they probably should have done something like this maybe right out of the gate. Like maybe they should have, uh, you know, discounted the game. Maybe it shouldn't have been a uh, full price title right off the bat. Well, I'm pretty sure they did, didn't they? They dropped it. I think a solid 20 bucks shortly after release a month, a month or so. Yeah, pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah, not at launch, though. At launch, it launched as full price. I'm going to say about it. I mean, launch is you're thinking of like launch day, but I'm thinking like launch window, a week or two, it was discounted pretty early yeah, on. Yeah, after like a week, I think it was a week, week and a half, they dropped it pretty quickly because it was not selling. Yeah, yeah, and that, that can be seen as a, a bad sign, too, a sign of weakness. Some people might right. see a, a drop in price later on and be like, oh, well, there's a reason they're dropping price. I mean, they were damned if they do, damned if they don't. They were not going up against easy competition. I think it's a fun game. 
Do I think it's you know super great? No, but neither do I think Overwatch is super great. Um, different strokes for different folks, I guess. But it is certainly you don't play this game and go, wow, this is you know alien colonial aliens colonial marines. You don't think it's a bad game that was just slopped together. Another just, Gearbox title. It's just a game that was. Um, you know, just didn't get much traction. But what I want to ask Sean is, Sean, do you think Battleborn did not take off? Because if we just have some real frank discussion here, that even though Randy Pitchford and his uh, crew can give us whatever game they want, at the end of the day, people just want Borderlands 3 from Gearbox and nothing else? Yeah, I believe pretty that's much. probably, that's pretty much what, that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants, about, they want, they want Borderlands 3. Um, and this one, I don't know what happened with this, but I was never really interested when it, when it came out, <clears throat> I looked at it. Um, I thought about it for a minute, but it's really not my kind of game, but yeah, I, I think that, I think that really everybody's looking forward to another, you know, a, a series that the people know and will, you know, they like playing. Mm. I mean, if we kick it back to, you know, music, you could say, you know, oh, geez, you know, certain artists don't do well because they strayed from what they were good at. And people just didn't give them the accolades or didn't have the same sales because they strayed too far from what they were known for. And I feel like this could be the same thing that, you know, while it's still a shooter and certainly has some artwork and some of the same humor, it's still not Borderlands. And they do so well with that franchise. You go to cons, you know, expos or whatever, and there's just tons and tons of people cosplaying as Borderlands. And... um I really just think it has not taken off because people want Borderlands 3. They don't want Battleborn. And, you know, Gearbox may be thinking that, you know, they wanted to try something new. So this was it. And it's oh. it's obviously not doing well, obviously. I so, mean, I, mean, I mean. Just like a musician, you get tired of playing the same old type of style over and over again. And you want to make changes. I am positive that they got tired of making Borderlands and wanted to try something different. But it didn't seem like it actually took off, which is unfortunate. But let's move into the community question of the week. Corey, why don't you tell people what the question was? All right. Question of the week was, if you could play a multiplayer game with any person, living or dead, who would it be? What game and why? So got a few responses on Twitter. Um, do we do we want to say ours first or should we go after everybody? We'll go after them like, after. We, just, like we usually do. Okay. <clears throat> All right, uh, Lizzie Hedgehog, I like your name, by the way, at Lizzie Silvis on, uh, on the Twitters. She said, I'd play Sonic games with Michael Jackson. He was a big Sonic fan, and she's actually completely correct. Um, Michael Jackson actually wrote and composed all the music to Sonic 3. He's uncredited in the game because uh, the game was in production right when that whole, you know, Michael Jackson fucks kids thing kind of came out, so... Some people say his name was scrubbed because of that. Some people say his name was scrubbed because uh, he didn't like how the final product sounded and he wanted his name taken off it. Um, but uh, Sega, for the longest time, denied any involvement with him. But the uh, original composers, the people who are credited on the game, um, have actually come forward since then and admitted Michael Jackson wrote like all the music for the entire game. So remember that next time you play Sonic 3. Hmm. I did not know that. Yeah. And uh, all right, I should move on. I've been droning on about Michael Jackson and Sonic. It's from uh, Shonuff71, at Shonuff71 on Twitter. It says, Mech Assault with anybody. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. That's so sad, though. Probably the most oh, fun. Oh, dude, Mech Assault was so much fun, though. And it, and it was fun to play with anybody. You know, we jumped on and just played. You could play randoms, and it was fun. So go play with the man. The man is lonely. He says, probably the most fun multiplayer game, aside from fighters, I've ever played. OG the Xbox for the win. Yeah, the only problem with that is the online servers are no longer online. So you yeah. can only play via uh, uh, LAN or whatnot. So. All right, That's so road trip, to, road trip to Show Enough's house then. Next episode. <clears throat> All right, and uh, Holy Headshot, at Holy Headshot on Twitter. He says, uh, good question. Not sure anything could top when I got to play Blops 1 with Gary Witta and the PC Gamer crew years ago. Listen to this name dropper. Mm. <laughs> but uh, maybe NHL with some of the uh, New York Rangers players, uh, one for each position, and Hank in net on my side. Hank or Hanky? Hank. <laughs> All right, Jay, that's your cue. All righty. So we're going to move on here to uh, Loss, the elusive man. Uh, Loss? Says, uh, <laughs> Los, Loss. Really, really, dude? Do you want really? me to say things correctly or incorrectly? Correctly, please. 
correctly. Okay, Los. <laughs> I would play Destiny with Robin Williams because it's my favorite multiplayer game, and I can only imagine the jokes, voices, impressions, etc. I would hear from him while playing. RoboPig via Discord. Uh, this is how he answered us. Uh, I will go with Mortal Kombat with Bruce Lee. I think I could take him. <laughs> I like the mental image of him beating Bruce Lee, talking shit, and then Bruce Lee just beating the living shit out of him. <laughs> I, I think the Robin Williams thing is um, is pretty good. That's pretty good. I think yeah, he was a gamer a, too. I think he was a big handheld gamer, like 3DS and stuff like that. Yeah, really big gamer. Big yeah. Nintendo fan. I mean, his daughter's name Zelda. It's not a coincidence. Not right. a quinkadink. Um, so it seems like a lot of people here, with the exception of Shonuff from Gamer Husbands, has gone the old celebrity route. Uh, maybe we have some different answers. Uh, Logan, you are the guest. So why don't you uh, tell us first how you would answer this question? All right. Uh, I think I'm going to go with playing games with Orson Scott Card. Uh, Ender's Game and that Ender's Game uh, series, my favorite books. And, you know, any personal stuff about him aside, I just want to dive into video games with him. Uh, probably something sci-fi, I, if it's Eve or you know, Stark or something something sci-fi with him that he can just ramble on about and, and complain about or tell me how everything's wrong in it. That would be awesome to me. Just, um, just stay away from any anything related to homosexuality. You don't want to go down that. Don't want right, to go down yeah, that no, road. Well, yeah, we just want to get started. We want to get started. Uh, and then, of course, I would challenge him. Challenge him at Overcooked. That's that's what uh, that's because people just get so frustrated with Overcooked. If you don't know what it is, <laughs> this cooking game you got to work together and you're just all yelling at each other to try and cook things while the entire kitchen is moving and and shaking and you're making burritos. And it's awful. I've heard it's a riot to play. Oh, it's <laughs> awesome. You know, I probably have not had a proper burrito, and I love my burritos. People know this. I probably have not had a proper burrito maybe two months. Mike, what the fuck? Hey, you know, I live a charmed life in my head. Wait a minute. Uh, That's right. You didn't get the burrito when you went to uh, Boston Fig either, did you? Oh, that's right. I did have a burrito then. I take all that back. I, I say you did, but I, I couldn't Bastard. speak to if it was proper or not. That's why I didn't that was say a proper, it. I, I take all the, everything I just said back. I blanked out Boston Fig. So I have had a burrito. All right, carry that's on. That's how good the games were. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, go ahead and answer, please. All right, well, I'm going to go. This is the only way I would ever go back into Call of Duty again is if I could play with Michelle Rodriguez. I'm, yeah. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? Michelle uh-huh. Rodriguez was in Lost, right? Yeah, she was in Lost and she was in The Fast and the Furious. Fast and Furious, yeah. Mm-hmm. That and Doom. She, I, I would play both of those games with her without a doubt because uh, she, she's just awesome. I think she's an awesome person. So that's Now, you know she's in Blobs 3. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, But that's the only way I would get back into Call of Duty would if I could play with her. All what about right, Katie Morgan? Good. Would you play with her too? Holy God. Really, Jay? We're going to bring it <laughs> I'm trying to keep this classy. You're bringing Look it up, people. We have Look a guest, up. Jay. We have a guest. Come on. What? I didn't even swear on that one. All right, Jay. Go ahead. Uh, for me, uh, it'd be get the old group back and uh, play, uh, was it uh, Mass Effect 3 uh, multiplayer? Mm. That was a lot of fun. We had, I think we played that for months. We did. It was, it was, um, it was just known. You got out of work and you came home and played. Yeah, I mean, we just jumped on and played, and everybody was like, "I'll be on at eleven o'clock." Boom, and you stop playing, and it was it was great. We 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 enjoyed it, ribbed each other about whether people were spending money on um, on was it the boxes there or right, whatever right. they we were. were. Like, don't do it, don't do it. And you're like, it's too, it. late. it's too late, it's too late, it's too late. I already spent some, and yeah, we we played that, and that was a lot of fun. Matter of fact, I, I I would really love to get back into playing that. That was a lot of fun. I think we played with the you and Ender and uh, you and, and yep. I even think we had some of the um, press A to listen guys, maybe Pantless Steve and Robo Pig, maybe yeah, occasionally I mean, yeah. Um, we'd have other people yeah. yeah, we'd have other people come in and. And play that. That was just a lot of fun, especially you know. And we finally built up to the point where we could play, you know, the gold, um, the gold level, which was uh, the difficulties, uh, and you could play those. And really enjoyed playing that a lot. Ender was no joke with that. Ender was on point. Yeah, he was. He was really good with that. So, um, well, kudos to you, Jay, for picking a non-celebrity answer. Yeah, 
Well, you's kind of a celebrity, and we are. We're on. We're on the internet. All right. Well, Corey, you came up with this question. I'm not going to acknowledge. I'm just going to keep going. Corey, uh, you came up with this question. Uh, so yes. Your um, my answer. Uh, the person I would play with would uh, have to uh, definitely be Jesus. I would. I would love to play a video game with Jesus. I'm not. I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go down the road, you know, I, he, he was a guy, historically, we know he existed, son of God, blah, 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 I'm not going to go down that road, I don't know, it doesn't matter, I just want to play a video game with him, you know, and then we could talk, but what I would want to play with him is any version of Mario Kart, because if you're playing Mario Kart and you get hit by that motherfucking blue shell, you're going to lose your shit, and I would just, I would want to see Jesus, <laughs> like, I would want to see him curse me out for using that fucking blue shell, so... Mm. Mario Kart with Jesus. <laughs> well, oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this, and I'm gonna borrow from Jay. I'm gonna borrow from Corey. So if Jay, yes. very, Jay, very. I know where you're going. No, 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 no. You do. Uh, Jay very eloquently said Mass Effect Three. I will also echo those sentiments and say Blur with the one of yeah. Swords crew. We had some great times. So that could be a um, another possibility. Now Corey said Jesus. Now my Jesus, Lemmy Kilmeister from Motorhead. <laughs> would be the one that I would pick. He is my Jesus. And so Lemmy was also a big um, gamer. He played a lot of the uh, slot machines at the Rainbow Bar and Grill, but back at his apartment, he would play a lot of, like, you know, uh, World War II fighter games and things like that. So my criteria for this is I don't want to teach someone how to game. So, Corey, you would have to teach your robe stand wearing Jesus how to play games. <laughs> I do not want to go down that road. Let me know how to play games. It is Mario Kart, though. The J-Dog would pick it up pretty quick, I think. Uh, I just would hand the control to Lemmy, and it would be on. And I wouldn't have questions or anything. I would just want to hear him talk. I just would want to be around him, listen to his stories, his anecdotes, and things like that, and just have a good time. And, you know, we'd probably have some Jim and Bean or some, you know, uh, screwdrivers or whatever. I think when he got later in life, he knew the end was nearing. He switched the, uh, you know, the Coke and Jim Bean to some screwdrivers and just, you know, vodka and orange juice, so to speak. So <clears throat> let me from Motorhead is my answer. And, uh, Corey, I believe we have an answer from Joe, Joe State. We do, yes. Uh, Joe State, uh, he gave us this post-mortem answer. This is a super easy given. Dude, I would play any survival horror game with Christopher Walken. <laughs> you can only imagine the possibilities. It would be so hilarious. And so fun. That guy has to be the coolest dude to ever hang out with. I swear it. I mean, I've never done it, but it's easy to swear. Uh, anyways, sorry I couldn't make it. <clears throat> uh, my throat is maximum raspy, and uh, I don't think I can make it all the way through a podcast. Oh, by the way, it's Joe State, in case you didn't know. Bye. <laughs> I thought he was going to pick Matt Roloff. <laughs> <laughs> Put him in the put him in the uh, throne and play. Mm, somehow I don't think so, Jay. I tried. All right, the community question for next week, Jay. Why don't you tell people what it is? Community question for next week is: Do you have a specific video game, kind of like comfort food of the gaming kind, uh, something that's old and familiar, and you play now and again to feel good? So maybe like Mario Kart, like uh, Corey was just saying, or perhaps Rocket League or some other games that you just sit down and it's like secondhand nature. Yeah, like you're, you're not trying to accomplish anything. You're not trying to beat a level or two tonight. It's just like, I'm just going to do this because it's just like nice, warm, feel good inside. You know, play this for 15 minutes and then go to bed kind of thing. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I look forward to the community's uh, answers next week and certainly will answer as well. Logan, you are not going to be on next week, and I do apologize for that. So you get to answer the community question for next week now. Is there a particular game if you had just wanted to kick back and relax tonight and play without, like Corey said, uh, making progress or beating a certain boss or level? Is there something that you would play? I can always jump into you know like a Mario game or a Zelda game, but I think that I've really been missing Skyrim. Uh, so I'm excited that Skyrim's coming back out uh, at the end of October. So I can just keep that on my PS4 all the time and jump into that and you know run around in the world and you know kill some stuff for 15 minutes and and then go to bed. Sounds ideal to me. Yeah. 
All right, well, let's move into uh, what we've been playing and watching. And I'm looking at a lot of people's list here, and it seems like a lot of us have been watching Luke Cage. So rather than have everybody mention it individually, why don't we just uh, knock this off right at the top? <clears throat> uh, I have watched it, but I've only watched episode one. So please, no spoilers. But um very satisfied with the first episode. There was rather some nice jumblies. Mm. In, uh, first episode that I uh, liked. Mm. Uh, <laughs> a little, a little slow going, but it certainly picked up at the very end, no doubt. Uh, anybody else have anything else they want to add on that, uh, Sean? Um, well, I'll tell you, I finished it, so and Ooh. it's awesome. I love it. It's, I'm, I'm looking forward pinched. to the next. Oh you know, yeah, of course I did. Well, because what happens is, as I start watching, I'm like, oh, this is pretty good. I'm, I'll just watch the next episode. And then the next thing I know, it's 13 episodes later, and I'm done. It's been a whole day. So, you know, it's one of those things. <laughs> where my you pants aren't even around my ankles. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I love it. I, I, they, they're doing a bang-up job with it. Um, I like I like this a lot better than I did Jessica Jones. Um, so, uh, really? Uh, yeah. I, yeah I'm, <clears throat> and I'm a big Jessica Jones fan, but I, this is definitely the, the – I forget his name, the actor that plays Luke Cage, but he's just he's, – he's phenomenal. I, I mean I'm just – I can't wait till season two. And, and the story's good too because Jessica Jones I, – I, my comparison to it was that the amount – that they told an entire season of Jessica Jones would have fit in one Daredevil, and now they'll even say Luke Cage episode. I mean, they just dragged that out so bad. Um, I, I enjoyed so? it, but for Jessica Jones, oh yeah, that was so slow going. Um, Luke Cage, M- Mike mentioned that it was kind of slow going, but I mean, they got to kind of set it up, and I think they set it up pretty good. I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't feel that it went slow. So, but uh, I mean, yeah. I'm just talking about episode one. Uh, that's all I've right. watched. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, how many episodes does everybody watch? Is any, anybody besides Sean finished it? I'm. I think I'm. I've either seen three episodes or maybe I've seen four episodes. Four. But yeah, I'm. I'm only on three or four. All right, and Jay, I watched two today. Two. And Logan, have you watched this at all? I haven't started it yet. I've heard you know great things. The trailers looked awesome. Mm-hmm. But oh, so excellent. good. Oh, so yeah. good. Now, yeah. is it is it spoiler territory if I ask Sean if Jessica Jones makes an appearance at all? I don't want to know. Don't all right. answer that. We won't answer that. Don't no, answer that. Don't want to know. All right. I'm not answering um, that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so far I am uh, satisfied and I will keep watching. It's definitely not something you want to watch with your kids. My wife and I started to watch this and I said to her, I go, you know, my oldest son, I said, Ryan wants to watch this. And, uh, you know, nothing was really said. And then all of a sudden, you know, stuff starts to transpire in the episode. She looks at me. He is not allowed to watch this. Yeah, no. Jumbly's no. first episode. Yep. And, yeah. He is not allowed to watch this. <laughs> she wasn't is- so upset about the Jumbly's. That wasn't yep. – she doesn't have a hang-up on stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but is this the first uh, Marvel property, be it movie or TV show, that has nudity in it? I don't recall any nudity in Daredevil or Jessica Jones. And And – you know, if if we want to be really on point, I don't know if there was. I thought Jessica any... Jones did. Maybe it did. I could be yeah. wrong. I'm, I'm like. I'm it was happy. just smaller. Oh. <laughs> well, I I know that. Uh, well, it's a valid point. <laughs> some of the strippers have pasties on in uh, in Luke Cage. I know that. Yes. But, yeah. But it. Um, yeah. I, Very I well glued the... on, my say. Oh, that's the um, thing to say. I'm gonna that's, I'm that's I'm gonna weird. let I'm gonna let this because this is not really a spoiler, but that's those are the only jumblies you're gonna see in the whole thing. So. Nah. What? Oh man! Fuck they this were some canceled. There were some nice ones though. But it's it's I, I like the way it's written. I like the way it's paced. I feel like uh, it's paced similar to Jessica Jones, and I like the way that whole show is paced. I love that Netflix has become that dark, gritty, street level corner of the Marvel universe. Um, and that because my favorite Marvel character of all time is the Punisher, and we know that he's getting his show. So like that's what I wanted for the Netflix corner to be. And I feel like they are they shy away less from mentioning you know the incident and the other characters um, less than like Agents of Shield did for a while. Agents of Shield like would never mention anything to do with the uh, you know what was going on in the yeah. cinematic portion. Lately in Agents of Shield they would mention like the Sokovia Accords and stuff like that. But um, like they mentioned the incident quite a few times. Um, there was one guy who was in Daredevil who was I mean there might be more but I've seen who who was in this and um, they do make reference to what happens in um, 
Jessica Jones. So you know that this takes place post Jessica Jones because they do make a couple of references to it. I um, laughed out loud. And again, I'm only on episode one when the character from um, the, what's that Sons of Anarchy showed up. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. I yeah. left. I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me. That was a little yeah, I didn't think he was that, that great of an actor either. So we'll see where his character goes. Sean obviously knows more than me, but I looked at that and I was like, oh, this is so typical. I, I do I, like – oh, go ahead. The thing that I like about these, you know, the Daredevil, the Jessica Jones, and the Luke Cage, and I'm liking Luke Cage about equal to Daredevil, but I think this tells more story, even though there is some action from what I've seen so far. Um but they tell it without having to have all kinds of CG effects and, you know, and all that. I mean, there are some fight scenes and whatnot, but they just – they're telling a really good story in these. So I'm really enjoying this, um, you know. So I, I'm hoping it continues on. Like I said, I'm only two episodes in, but I am I am already – deeply sucked in i mean this is a sh- also a show that you have to pay attention it's not like you could kind of have it in the background playing you have to pay attention to the story if you really want to get everything out of it and you know i'm hoping that there will be some crossover kind of like jessica jones did with daredevil and whatnot you know so that you kind of get a little bit and it adds a little bit to each show so it, i'm really eager to see this stuff come out so i like how uh i like i like the actor who's playing cottonmouth i really really like how he's playing that character he seems he's like very reserved and menacing he comes off kind of as uh yeah as a kingpin does i, I like that like yes. menacing feel to him and i really like how the whole show is very noir the whole show is a noir which you don't see with like a like it's a you know obviously because it takes place in harlem it's primarily black cast and but you don't see a noir uh, type story with that kind of cast. It's very cool. I'm I'm really into the whole tone of the show. I yes. was going to ask that with the whole black cast. Certainly, it doesn't sound like it is affecting the five of us white guys here. But I wonder nationally how well this will do with people that are not black. I don't know. Will... I mean, I, I, I honestly, I couldn't tell you because I'm very, very into the show. But that's because I knew him from comic books. So I think right. it's going gonna, it's gonna to bring in a lot of people uh, that way, and I think it's going to bring a lot in a lot of people who are just into the new Netflix Marvel universe. You know, like Daredevil brought in a ton of people, which is super surprising. If you told me 15 years ago that Daredevil and then Jessica Jones were going to have shows that would have been popular, but get the fuck out of here! Nobody knows who those characters are outside of comic books. I think um, it's certainly not uh, on the same level. But Flash is. I think the new Flash episode season starts this week. Something for. <laughs> Yeah, but it does. It turn into. I got to jump in at this point. I got to. Uh, the Flash is easily one of the best shows on television right now. Uh, just across the board. It's fantastic. Um, you know, it's. I don't even know. I don't have that much to say, but it's just really, really good. So uh, that's on WB, right? Uh, CW. 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 So, CW. Okay. so let me ask you, Logan, because it's on CW, I have not done my research, so I'm a bad parent in this aspect, but. My son watches it, and I just bought him season two on DVD, and he just finished that last week. And so he's looking forward to season three now. Because it's on CW, is this kid appropriate, or have I made a a large mistake here? Well, how old is your kid? Uh, Eleven. You're probably fine. I mean, you're not not seeing any – what was it? Jigglies, jubblies, jumblies, (laughs) jumblies. You're not seeing any jumblies on the CW. Um, and, I mean, there's no swearing or anything. It is it is probably very, very friendly. Um, you know, gets a, a little bit dark at times, but no, I think you're okay. He's a, he's right. a very kid-friendly Justice League character. I would think he's not going to get a brooding Batman or Zack Snyder's brooding Superman. He's so. much more straightforward. I mean, it, he's much more uh, uh, of a clean-cut guy than even the Arrow is, you know, which is their other you know big show on the CW. So, Yeah, Grant oh. Gustafson's a good guy. I like him as the Flash for sure. Yeah. Well, I'll continue I'll on with the um, television talk, so I'll go first. I've also been watching Fear of the Walking Dead. I'm all caught up, and the finale is tonight, so when I'm done with this, I'll go watch that. And certainly it is not as gruesome as the regular franchise, The Walking Dead. So that is uh, something my wife can tolerate. So I'm watching this with her. And there are some characters in there that I just want to 
absolutely beat the shit out of. Um, they just really annoy me. And I don't know if that's a sign of a good actor or just a sign of someone that's just the, the writing for the character is just so poor. I'm not, I'm not sure which is which right now. I think it's the latter. Well, I got to uh, ask, you want to beat them up just because they seem like they're an asshole, right? Yes. Yeah. Not because they're acting as horrible. Right. Well, there's well, there's a little bit of that. There's one guy that's sort of like a young, um, what's the um, Pirates of Caribbean guy? I can't think of his name right now. Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp. There's like a young Johnny Depp who was in uh, was really annoying in season one. He's come a long way in season two, so he is less annoying. But there's this other son in this uh, show who um, I guess is following along with a group of kids his age because he wants to fit in and sort of basically disowned his father throughout the series, the middle of the series. Um, and that really just, oh, I just wanted to hurt that kid badly. Uh, there are some other characters that I think are very stupid as well that, that makes my head spin. But um, we'll see where this is going. I'm not sure how, how much longer they can do this because eventually – I think The Walking Dead is just supposed to take over. I mean, this is supposed to be like the prologue of like how it started, even though they really haven't gone into much detail about how all this uh, took place. Yeah, it, it really makes no sense to me as far as the setting time-wise goes because it's like this takes place before the events of The Walking Dead, so before the apocalypse happens. So don't they continually have to put off what everybody is looking for? to have happen like everybody wants to see the apocalypse happen nobody wants to see what the fuck you were doing before the zombie apocalypse well, happens. The, they pretty much by i don't know i'm just guessing now just trying to remember by episode three or four of the first season i mean it already happened i mean it was like san diego and la were already shut down and it was widespread so we're in full-fledged you know apocalypse mode right now i mean Oh, I thought they were avoiding the whole – I thought they were going to continue to stay before it, which never never made sense to me. No, I mean there's like – you know, there's pockets of survivors. I've never watched The Walking Dead, but I'm assuming that's what it is too, that there's pockets of people that didn't get infected and are carving out their own life. Although it seems like in The Walking Dead, at least in the commercials they show, it's a, it's a lot more um, gang and click and ultra-violent, right? Well, you know, this, the original Walking Dead too, uh, it took place uh, – Rick – is a cop who is the, the main character, and he was uh, – I cannot remember because it's been so long, but he was in the hospital in like some sort of coma, and he wakes up you know, an unknown amount of time into the zombie apocalypse. For some reason, he wasn't you know, attacked in the hospital, but he wakes up, and the hospital has been decimated, and that's how it starts. You don't, you're not exactly sure how far along into it it is when you, when you start the story with Rick. It's yeah, assumed yeah. it's been like maybe a week or two or something like that. In the beginning of Fear of the Walking Dead, there's, like, some people that get, like, shot by guns. It's, like, you know, typical, like, teenage angst. You know, they're fighting and the gun goes off and hits someone. And, you know, the kid looks down. Oh, my God, he's he's dead. He's dead. And all of a sudden he turns into a zombie. And that's, you know, some of the early scenes of those episodes is, like, a guy, uh, this uh, kid who was in the hospital trying to detox from heroin. And the guy next to him turns. And things like that. So it's very slow going. But now it's in full season two, full fledged. Everybody's a fucking zombie except for these pockets of people. Nice. Um, other than that, I've been playing a lot of Rive on PS4. It is uh, frustrating but fun at the same time. But slowly making some progress. I think I'm on level uh, or world five at this particular point. So a little bit of progress from last week. I forgot I've been playing that too, and uh, that is a brutal as far as uh, – I mean basically you go in to play it and it says hard mode, and that's it. doesn't really yeah. give you an option. There is actually an option to bring it down, and it, I think it calls it soft mode or something right, like that. Right, it prompts that. you. Yeah, it, it's a prompt, yeah. So um, I haven't bumped it down to that yet, but yeah, it is, uh, it is tough, but it's very hard, but – you get satisfaction when you beat that section finally. Mm. So it's one of those games. I just love the sounds and the explosions. So it's a, it's a game, like I said last week, very much like Bro Force. When I die, I don't care because I like the whole mechanics yeah. of everything of how it works. And it loads up quick, too. I mean, boom, you start yes. right, you're starting right back. And it's not like you're sitting there waiting. You're not really penalized for mm. death other than the fact that you have to repeat that section again. And that's how you learn the sections, too, is by going through there. When you die, you learn what not to do the next time, and then you can do it again. So it's not a frustrating death where you're just like, I don't know what to do. 
you, you actually you learn from it. So, well, what a segue, Jay! Give yourself a round of applause. Uh, <laughs> this next game, Quantum Break. I, um, you know, Jay's been finishing a lot of games or talking about finishing a lot of games. So that got me thinking about Quantum Break, how I'm sort of right at the end and I needed to finish this. So I fired this up, I believe, on a Thursday this week. And I was right. I was on um, Act 5 or Story 5, Act 3 or whatever. I was pretty close to the end. And then I eventually I I got to. Then eventually I got to the end. And um, Jay's son, Jamie. Um, many months ago, I was talking about how frustrating it was. He spent two hours on this and never finished it. And I was like, ah, come on, it can't be that hard. Just, you know, figure out the rhythm, the timing of the boss, and Mm -mm. you'll be all good. Well, is it a boss? I don't know. Basically, the the villain in the game is there at the end, and I don't know what is happening, but he gives off these, like, reddish – glowing stuff that like kills you like instantly so and while that is happening there are other enemies you know just typical end of the game stuff you know waves of enemies coming at you and they're very easy to take out and sometimes they even die by this stuff that the the main villain is you know giving off that red stuff again so a lot of times you don't even have to kill everybody but I am running, I am dodging, I am doing my like time stuff to create those time bubbles so I don't get hit. Mm-hmm. And I think I'm doing fine. I get deep into like, you know, these waves, and then all of a sudden this like red stuff comes out of nowhere and instantly kills me without any sort of explanation. Son of a bitch, I think I'm at the end. You know, it's um it's just very frustrating. And I've watched on um, YouTube because I'm not afraid to do that. I'll go look and see how other people are doing it. And I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm running. I'm dodging. I'm using the time stuff. But for whatever reason, um, I just I think you're going to use that teleport thing where you move quickly out of the out of that area. And uh, like said, I said, I actually think I may be at the end because what you're explaining is the guy that I'm fighting right now. And it's just wave after wave after wave, and you die instantly when that stuff comes up. Yep. And it's frustrating as all get out. Yes. Uh, what wasn't frustrating is Alien Nation. Played a bunch of that this week with randoms and with um, Dan from Dad's Getting Grounded. Made lots of progress and actually finished the game last night, the uh, first world, I should say. So now my map is all red, and I'm not sure if it's a new game plus or whatever, but... There's other things I can do and things look different, so that's where I'm at with that. Is it me or is that harder than um, Zombie Nation or Dead Nation? So I not find Zombie it easier. Nation, Dead Nation. You find it easier? Okay. I do I, find it easier. I, I liked uh, I liked Dead Nation better. I figured I, – I think it was easier for me to figure out how to play it because your upgrades were just at the end or in between each level. You kind of just picked your – your armor and your weapons, and then you could go out and play. Where this one, you kind of so many more options. I just don't seem to be able to pick the right options, and I just go out there and instantly die. So yeah, Dead Nation was pretty straightforward as far as the upgrading goes, but yeah. there were there were some parts near the end where I feel like if you had chosen um, certain paths with upgrading your weapons, you could have been pretty fucked. I got lucky, yeah. and and I show I chose wisely i guess so uh yeah. i managed to be able to beat the game but um yeah god those games are so great man loved it yeah they, they're really good games excellent uh twin sticks so alien nation very much like rive where i love the sound effects the explosions mm-hmm. again i don't mind so much if i die and it's got four player co-op and i played with three randoms last night and um we had no problems at all did we die a couple times sure but it was a lot of fun. There was no problems. And no one wanted to talk with each other, which was awesome. We all just communicated via the in-game chat. Nice. Sorry. Over here. Thanks. It, worked yeah. no pro- it was no problem at all. I got to get and, back into that. And lastly, uh, Batman, the uh, Telltale series. I'm um, not complete with the um, episode two yet. I'm only about halfway through. But just like episode one, I really think it's um, a stellar game. They uh, some of their games are hit or miss, and I think um, this one is a hit, so I'm enjoying it. Who wants to go next, Corey? 
Uh, yeah, mine, I'll keep it short and sweet. I haven't had a ton of time to play games this week. So uh, Ark, obviously, I won't go into that. Uh, Don't Starve Together, uh, really, really loving that. Uh, playing that online with a couple friends of mine. You can play it split screen while playing online. So I managed to get my wife into it. And I think lately she's been more into it than I have. So uh, that's really cool. I'm glad to see someone else getting into the survival game genre. Um, I think this is the first one she's ever played. So that's a lot of fun to play couch co-op. And I also mentioned last episode that I recently bought a PS1, so I have been playing a bunch of uh, Rebel Assault 2 and Metal Gear Solid, which are just still tons of fun. And Metal Gear Solid, that opening where you just you swim in and you come up out of the water, and despite it, you know, obviously looking like dog shit now, is still just so iconic. Still love it. So that's that's pretty much it for me. I came very close to buying XCOM 2, but I think I'm not going to. I think I'm going to wait and just put that money towards Gears 4, so... That's it for me. Yeah, I'm hearing not so great things about XCOM too. Yeah, really? I mean, I, I it's it's getting well reviewed. I think it's getting a 90 on average Metacritic for yeah PS4 and like upper 80s for uh, for the X Bone. But I mean, the first XCOM was kind of ignored by a majority of people too because it's such yeah. a, a weird new thing. So I felt almost obligated to pick it up because I love the first one, and I'm like, I'll feel rushed to beat it before Gears, and I was like, yeah, I'll just yeah. wait and. Put the money towards gear. And, and XCOM is new on console, but it's been out on PC for months. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So, so I mean, and it's got good reviews there. So I, I don't know where the bad reviews are coming from. It's but, not reviews. Uh, it's basically just people playing it that I'm hearing oh, things. People playing. Yeah. You know, I thought I saw Smitty and some other people uh, chime in that they were having some issues with it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that is Smitty's type of game. So, Sean, how about yourself? I've also been playing some ARC, but I won't talk about that here because I have a podcast to do that on now called Rated ARC. Thank you very much. A little plug there for them. Because they still been on that yet? Not yet, but they I'm going to get them on there because they actually <laughs> they actually found me on here. I never told them what other podcast I was on, and apparently the one of the hosts found me on Gamers of Bay, so now she listens too. So I guess we got some new uh, some new listeners. Um, uh, Excellent. Well, thanks for listening. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, listener. Arc rules. <laughs> um, I've also been playing some Minecraft Sky Factory, which is a mod. Um, that's that's my game. That if I had to go for comfort food, that's what I go back to. Play a little bit of that, and you know everything is good. I don't have to think about anything other than just you know just playing the game, and and that's it. Uh, I've also been playing some Farming Simulator. Go ahead and laugh now. <laughs> okay, that's right, supposed go. to be a good game. Yeah. It yeah, is. People rave about that. I yeah. what, what, tell me the appeal. I know some games it's tough. It's like a tough sell. Like like Animal Crossing is a tough sell. What is the sell of Farming Simulator? Give give me the elevator pitch. All right. So the, here here's the thing. I I wouldn't even know how to pitch this game. I just know I like I I like the aspect of it. There's no there's no multiplayer. Well, actually, there is multiplayer. You can play with friends on a server. They actually have servers you can get with that have, uh, you know, whatever map you decided. It's kind of like Ark with that in that respect. But I don't know. It's just it's relaxing. Like, I don't have to worry about anything. All I got to do is I got to plant the crops. But you got to do everything that a, a real farmer would actually do. So you got to you know plant the crops. You got to you got to plow the fields. You got to do all that stuff. Then you grow the crops. Then you sell the crops. And it's just like a whole big thing. But the farm, it, it can be huge. So you're talking like a lot of time just, you know, um, farming, I guess, for lack of a better term. I mean, that's pretty much what you're doing. And, you know, it's not a it's it's really not that complicated. It's and it's a cool game because there's you know, they give you new equipment all the time. You can I'm doing it modded. So there's a, I have a few mods on there. Um, so it gives me a couple more different vehicle uh, variations that I wouldn't have normally in the real game. And coming out in October is the new one, which is uh, Farming Simulator 17, which is supposed to be upgraded in graphics. Now, I will tell you that this game looks nice anyway, without without being i mean it looks it looks it's very nice looking it's very very um uh, what's the word i'm looking for it's um the environment is very good it's it's not uh it, it looks pretty you know as long as you have your your machine is up to par with that and you know i don't know it's just relaxing for me like i don't have to think about anything it's again like minecraft where i just kind of just go in and I, and I play and i just unwind i don't have to worry about anything i just plant the crops feed the animals do this do that you walk. You can, you can wash the vehicles. They get dirty. You know. You wash. You put them away. You know. This. I'm just. I'm, I'm. Honestly, it's just. It's just one of those games where it's just basically. And I've been wanting to put this on here for a while, and I haven't, because I was waiting to see. 
But tonight I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. I don't care. I play this. It, yeah, everybody can see me playing it on Steam. So <laughs> this and, is this know, is your coming I, out of the closet for a farm simulator fan, I guess, right? He's coming out yeah. of the barn. I'm coming out of the farm. <laughs> um, now I have to, I have to ask, uh, how realistic is this? Now, if you go out and crank up the PTO too high with a shit spreader on it, does it does it cover you in shit? No. That's no, not, not realistic. Like that. No, no, but you do have to spread shit if you want your crops to grow, and you get double that. And it's a big game, actually. It's a lot bigger in Europe, um, but it's yeah. pretty decent size here. Um, and just some of the maps they have are really nice. They look really realistic, and they're pretty close. Well, the to graphics on this, are, you know, I think people would be surprised by looking at the name of it and then seeing what the what it actually looks like. So it's a very pretty game, and and I like it. And Holy Headshot will like this because when he hears this, he'll be laughing his ass off because. I currently have 180 hours in this game. Um, Holy jeez. So, <laughs> How many hours? Run a real farm. 180 hours. Dang. I, I, oh, like, please. I like to think that there's a lot of chores around your house that are falling to the wayside because you're sitting in front of your computer doing virtual chores. No. So you don't no, actually have time for the no. laundry and the dishes. No. And listen, guys, that was before ARC. So that's 180 hours in Farming Simulator and 1,300 hours in ARC. So... I mean, you know, it's a lot of weekends just chilling out and playing games. Now, much. here's a question for you. You have on here, it's modded. Uh, what do you put in for mods? You get, like, you put a big V8 in your tractor? What? No, you get, different, you get different vehicle uh, companies, you know, like Caterpillar, um, John oh, Deere. Okay. Different models of tractors that they don't have in the normal game. So, oh, okay. Like, yeah. so, but, but they use all real-world stuff. It's all real-world vehicles so it's everything you could get in real life if you want to become a farmer and everything else these are all vehicles you could actually get so yeah case can, can you do like a lot yeah can you can you like any really super odd mods like can you get like aliens to run around in your cornfields or anything like that like signs um no oh that's no, it's not uh, no <laughs> that was a graphics bump on one of them mods a uh, graphics what like a you know that makes it look better Oh, there's a couple things like grass and stuff that you can change, but okay, nothing crazy. Because I mean, the game itself is pretty good as it is. But there we go. I'm out of the I'm out of the bar now. I've said it. I actually play this game, and now I feel better. Nice. So I do. I, I got to ask you one question about this. So uh, I'm somebody who has a very not so secret passion for uh, the Harvest Moon series. Oh, there you go. Is, you know, also farming, but obviously it's much more um, I don't know, cartoony in feel. I guess a little bit if I'm somebody who likes the farming aspects and kind of the chore aspects of Harvest Moon, is this something that I'm going to get into or is it just so realistic, so different that it, it's not really the same? Well, it's definitely realistic, but it's not that realistic. I mean, you can, you can set it to do, you can set it so that your crops don't grow very fast or you can set them to grow really fast. Um, you can set the time to go really fast. Or you can set it to real time. So it's depending on what you want to do. But you might enjoy this game. I would wait until the 17 comes out because that's going to have a lot better things coming to it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, you might enjoy this. It's not that bad. And it's not that expensive either. I, I, I don't even know what I pay. I didn't pay that much for it. It was like 20 bucks or something, 24 bucks. It was, it was well worth the money. It might appeal to the same, you know, kind of brain space as Harvest Moon would. Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, there's. I mean, I like. I mock it, but there are plenty of games where there that I am really into that are hard sells. Like, like I said, like Animal Crossing, and you do lots of chores in survival games, like in Don't Starve and Ark. So I see. I don't know what it is about. Maybe it's like the eight type personality, or just like a mild OCD, where there's something very satisfying about just having these few jobs to do, and you complete them, and you have them done, and you can just look at your. I don't know your mode field or whatever it is in Farm Simulator. That is just like satisfies this weird part of your brain that is just like yes i needed to do that and i did it and now i need to do this chore and this chore and this chore i don't know what it is it's so satisfying about that but they've definitely tapped into it with uh with like you know farming simulator and games like that and this comes out every year so um every two years i think oh is it every two years yeah yeah, yeah it's every two years so 13, yeah, come on 15 and 17 mike yeah, have we put you to sleep yet yeah we, we gotta move on folks <laughs> <laughs> we gotta move on. yes logan what have you been up to Oh, God. Okay, so first off, uh, I had a flood in Cedar Rapids, so I'm, I'm about a week behind on all of my gaming. Um, but I... Uh, much done to the gaming stuff, or everything is good? No, everything's good. Everything's fine. It's just, you know, uh, some evacuation downtown where I was, kind of focusing on work, so uh, 
you know, I've got a couple of games sitting on my PS4 that I'm dying to get to. Um, Mystery Chronicle One Way Heroics, uh, Spike Chunsoft game. Uh, I got to get to that. Uh, Dear Esther, the um, game that was from uh, Chinese Room. They did the Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. Yeah, it just uh, recently came to PS4, right? Not just recently came to PS4. Um, so I got to take a look at that. I have that one as well. Um, and that's kind of, I mean, I'm the guy who likes those walking sims. I like the story, you know, uh, driven games, things like that. But uh, the last couple of games I played, Bears Can't Drift. That was that uh, kind of uh, crash racing spiritual successor. Um, so kind of fun. Mario Kart style kart racing. Uh, yeah, really I believe good. there is a review on BagoGames.com if somebody wants to go check that out. Yeah, so that was the PC version. I've got it on PS4, so that recently just came to PS4 as well. Um, and the PS4 version feels good. I like it a lot, especially if you were a big fan of uh, kind of those early console generation racers. This fills that kind of nostalgia vibe really nicely. Uh, a game called 140 from Double Fine Productions. I think they per- they published it, but some other smaller indie company uh, developed it. And it's this kind of a rhythm platformer. I wore it with my really expensive headphones, and it's so good. It's short. But it uh, it's really, really good. I can't recommend it enough. If you like um, anything like that, it's a 2D platformer. It's just little shapes. But the colors that they use in timing with this kind of really uh, kind of EDM music, uh, just really bassy and really – it's just cool. It's really – it's kind of got this club platforming feel. It's hard to explain, but uh, check out a trailer for it or something. It's if, if you're into that kind of stuff, it's really awesome. Uh, and then I guess the other the last thing I played was Valley. Well, it just came out on PS4, uh, well, I guess about a month ago now, m- maybe roughly. Uh, and that is 3D, somewhat open world. You are in an abandoned valley and you're searching for this thing called the Life Seed. And you kind of get this exosuit that was left behind. You can jump really high and really far and run really fast uh, and just kind of explore this valley and... Uh, it's really much more of an exploration game. It's, it gets a little bit creepy at times. There's only two enemies in the entire game, um, so it's really just focused more on this experience and the story. It, it's hitting a lot of those nice, you know, story exploratory vibes, but it doesn't quite hit the mark. It just falls a little short in terms of uh, there's just not enough there. Um, they don't give you enough of the running and enough of the jumping that feel really good uh, in these controls and, and throughout the world. Uh, it ends up just. I could have used more out of it just across the board. That sort of came under everybody's radar. That's out on uh, what, all the consoles or PS4, Xbox One, and PC, right? Valley, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking that's, at that. That's by the team that made Slender: The Arrival. Yes, if you, yep. if you remember oh. that one? Yeah. So this isn't a horror game like that one was, but it's it's got a little bit of those creepy vibes. So it's much more just exploration and and a little bit of story to it. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I'm the indie guy, so I like the indie stuff. All right. Anything else? Oh, let me take a look. Uh, I finally picked up GTA 5, so I spent a little time, you know, oh, wow. crashed some cars oh, okay. around. And I know. I know. Came to the game late. <laughs> Never heard uh, of it. It must be a little indie game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. By a little small right. studio. Yeah. 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 You know, but you pick it up on a Saturday and you just really need to drive a car off a cliff and, you know, jump a hooker or two. I don't know. I haven't played yet. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Well, Jay, what uh, have you been playing? What have I been playing? Well, as you mentioned, i um, been finishing up games. Um, and I put a poll out on Twitter, which has finished now, and uh, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. I've started that. Um, I literally had not started it. Uh, it's been out almost a year, and uh, I had not even started it. So I started that at the beginning of this week. Started playing that. And then... Um, in case anybody didn't know, Mike has a review for the HyperX Cloud X. Is that what yes. it's called? Uh, that released out this week, and I believe it was Monday. He asked me to jump on the PS4 because he was uh, we were testing some sound quality. Well, while I was on there, I fired up Far Cry 4 while I was in there. Um, of course, I mentioned I'd played Rive also, but we've been through that. Uh, but uh, I put uh, Far Cry 4 back in. And I said, you know what? I'm pretty damn close to the end of this thing, so I'm just going to jump in and play it. So it took me three days and probably, I don't know, 
maybe four or five hours, and I finished the game finally. Um, and I really want to find out th- with the ending if I have a choice similar to the beginning of it. Um, I would like to try that again. Unfortunately, Far Cry does not have multiple saves in it, so I'd have to play through the whole damn thing again. So I think I may just search on YouTube for this. Uh, mm-hmm. But uh, I did enjoy that um, and, and like that. And uh, now, like I said, I am playing Rise of the Tomb Raider, and I'm trying to finish that because uh, I'm tired of not finishing these games. And, and by finishing, I mean finishing the story of the you know, not getting all the uh, side missions and getting all the achievements or, or trophies or whatnot. So I, I, I'm, I'm trying to complete them in that way. And um, I'm playing Rise of the Tomb Raider and just trying to get into it. And there's times where I'm really into it and really enjoying the, the uh, you know, the play and, you know, you're trying to get along these ledges and move up and, and figure out these, these puzzles and, you know, to open things up to move on. And, you know, you have to use fire for certain things and you have to shoot certain things. And uh, I am enjoying it, but um, I don't know. It just doesn't give me the same feeling as Far Cry 4 and whatnot like that. So, uh, but uh I am getting into that, and I will have more on that uh, in future podcasts because uh, I am going to try and complete that. So we'll see Excellent. how that goes. And uh, as far as things I've been watching, I wanted to mention, uh, you know, we talked about Luke Cage. But uh, I've also – people have mentioned to check out Penny Dreadful, which is on Netflix. Uh, I think that's either Stars or HBO. I can't remember which. Uh, there's three seasons of it. Um and I am on the third season about halfway through right now. The first two seasons were pretty decent. Uh, there was a couple of episodes that, it, matter of fact, one of them I have pretty much slept through and woke up here and there. And then I went back and watched it again and realized I don't need to do this because the sections where I woke up were all I needed. Um, the, the season two got a little bit better. Um, you know, I, I'm really enjoying it. Season three is absolutely incredible. I am completely immersed, and and I'm kind of just where I'm at with it. I'm like, I don't want it to end because the storyline that they've got going on is so incredible that I don't want it to end. So, And uh, I believe that season three was the last season for it, from what I've been told from people. So um, kind of bummed, but uh, that's a good one to check out. It's kind of – and it's weird. It's about um, – Oh, what was the guy that had the painting? Um, he was immortal, and he had the painting. Dorian Gray. Dorian Gray. You've got um, Frankenstein's monster, Bride of Frankenstein, but all told within this really immersive story. Um, as vampires, um, you know, werewolves is just – it's – the way it's told is told in a completely different way, and it's very engrossing. So really enjoying that. So Penny Dreadful, if anybody's interested in checking that out. It is on Netflix. Anything else, Jay? That pretty much covers it, other than I haven't said it in a while. Angry Birds. <laughs> <laughs> Playing Angry Birds seasons. <laughs> All right. Let's fire up the beta test. Do you get some music for us, Corey, for this or no? Uh, I do, but uh, I think I want to. Uh, I think I want to talk about what the theme is uh, this time. I want to explain the rules first before we kick it off. All right, so this beta test is going to be called Customer Satisfaction. <whistles> All right, so I was actually inspired by a conversation I had with Mike. I think it was. I think it was technically after we stopped recording last time, but uh, you inspired this. Uh, so what's going to happen is. I'm going to read a user review for a product, and all you guys have to do is tell me whether or not it's a uh, piece of video game hardware or a sex toy. So one point for a correct answer, two bonus points if afterwards you can guess accurately the uh, product that I was describing. So that's all you have to do. Is it a sex toy or is it a piece of video game hardware? (laughs) Oh, this is going to be hard. <laughs> ah, hard. <laughs> we got some uh, people to play for here. Well, um, before before you divide that up, I think what we should do, because I want to have conversations where you guys debate what this is, so I think we should do a two-on-two. Okay. 
So me oh, and uh, me, me and Sean and Logan and Jay. So me and right, Sean are one, good. Me and right, Sean right. are one team, and Logan and Jay are another team. Um, we're gonna play for two people then, and we got um, five responses. And we're going to immediately take out Robo Pig because he won last week, and we're going to make a nice donation to his extra life. So um, it's really now between Los, Holy Headshot, Shownuff, and Lizzie Hedgehog. Um, Logan, give me uh, a number between one and four. Uh, three. Three. So Holy Headshot is one of the people we're playing for. Sean, give me a number between one and four and not three, please. One. One. So Lizzie Hedgehog. Sean and I will be playing for, and Logan and Jay will be playing for Holy Headshot. All right. Okay? Yeah. Got that all out of the way? Holy smokes. All right. Now, I'm going to do my best to try and keep score, but while I'm running the soundboard and doing the questions, uh, someone else might want to uh, double-check me. So if you get a pencil and paper there, someone else try to keep score as well. I'll keep I'm score a- at, the, at the bottom of the planner. All right, good, because I'm a couple of years in, so I might fuck that up. All right. All right, so uh, let's kick this off. I'm going to play the song, Don't Step on the Dog. Thank you for not stepping on the dog. All right. Now, before you proceed here, I need to ask, are we just blurting this out, or how is this going to work? Uh, well, it's essentially, you know, head or tails. You just have to decide which one it is. So, uh, you know, it's not like you have to come up with the answer first. So, yeah, you guys come to a consensus, the two the two of you on each team, and then, you know, say what your answer is. You guys can agree. You can disagree with the other team. It doesn't matter. I'm sure a few times you will disagree. And then, you know, okay. you better disagree and, sometimes or we won't have a game here. And how many questions do we have? There are 10, and the there is an, a tiebreaker if uh, we have an exact tie. So... So we both get to answer it and then uh, and are able to possibly score a point each time. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Jay and Logan, you guys will talk amongst yourselves, come to a consensus about your answer. Sean and Mike, you guys will do the same for each question. So let's kick it off. The first user review is, I've had it a few months, but it already stopped working. Additionally, the buttons are super hard to find if you're not looking directly at it. So what is that? Sean, what do you guys that is think? the PS4. Yeah, it's got to be the PS4 because I remember seeing a review about that. All right, so so you guys say video game hardware. Me, yep, that's what we're going yep, with. Yeah. All right, Jay, All right. what do you think? Um, I think it could be right because I think I remember that review also for the PS4. Yeah, I mean, I have a PS4 and I still can't find the button, so I I, I could believe it. It's harder to find than the G spot, I'm telling you. So <laughs> let's go with that. <laughs> All right, so uh, you guys both are. <sighs> Incorrect. I'm uh, sorry. That is actually uh, the. All right, this is a long title. It is the Mini Halo 20X Multi Speed Power Wand Massager. And this thing looked like a beast, let me tell you. But it has Halo in its name. It does have Halo in its name. <laughs> <laughs> does but not you make said, it video game hardware. You also said <laughs> PS4, so nope, wrong console. Yeah. All right, so no one's on the board yet. Question two. <clears throat> Unit was broken upon arrival, and the battery container was plastic. It didn't fit correctly together, and here's the kicker. Here's the major hint. It was not water-resistant. That's a sex toy. That's, that's, yeah, that's definitely a sex toy. No, okay, that's so, game hardware. That's game hardware. It could be so obvious, though, Sean. That, but <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I have but, to say that's a sex toy, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play along with that. Yeah, because what I don't know of any video game thing that's water resistant. Like, like gyromite or something. I don't know. Oh. Yeah, no. I'm, I'm letting Logan pick. Let's go sex toy. <laughs> yep. All right. You, uh, all right. So uh, you guys say sex toy. Sean and Mike, you guys also say sex toy, right? Yes. You guys all are right. correct. That is the rabbit vibrating cock ring, which is apparently not water resistant. So buyer beware, I guess. I just found it disgusting that that was like the major thing. Not water resistant. Like, oh, what? Where? I don't. I don't want to know. Or right. maybe we should say it's not fluid resistant. No, this guy specifically said water resistant. Well, maybe he he's washing it. Maybe. Yeah, could be. Yeah. You know, That's that makes so. sense. That's we'll true. Go with that. Right. <laughs> we got it right. Great. Great. I, I prefer regular showers over golden showers, but that's immediately where my mind went. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> oh shit. Question three. Oh, I'm the, half a bottle into McGillicuddy's right now, too. So, <laughs> The first one lasted a day. I used it for an hour. 
placed it in a drawer, came back the next day, and it powered on, but it wouldn't work. Also, my second one just died. Hmm. Oh, this that's tough. Easy, that could be Sean, this easily thing. could be the DualShock 4 controller or an Xbox One controller. Are they, I'm okay. Gonna, I'll, I'll let go, you look at this one because I don't know. But it also could be easily be a, a vibrator of, of some sort as well. So it's like heads or tails. Do you have a strong feeling one way or the other? I would say I, I want to go with sex toy, but knowing how the questions have been going, I'm guessing it must be a video game at this point. So, I mean, I don't know. I... I, I Ah, fuck. God damn it, I'm going to go with video game related. <laughs> All right, we'll go with video game. All right, Logan and Jay. Can we get a quick reread? A uh, quick reread. First one lasted a day. I used it for an hour, placed it in the drawer, came back the next day. It powered on but wouldn't work. Also, my second one just died. Jay, I really think it's game hardware. I'm I'm thinking it might be the Vita. I think it's but, game hardware, and I but think. How many people put that in a in a drawer? So, it could be the sex toy. Well, I think it's game <laughs> hardware. I think it's because they say uh, it powered on. I don't think anyone says that their electric dildo powered on, right? Their vibrator just power on. You turn on your vibrator, right? <laughs> it roars power to on life. To <laughs> okay, uh, I'm go. I'm going with your your reasoning, and we will say game hardware. All right, you guys are both correct. <laughs> With game hardware, but since you're both correct, uh, anyone wants to take a shot at the uh, two bonus points for guessing exactly what it is? Dual shot Vita. four. Uh, you're both. You're both wrong. That that was the Xbox One Wireless Elite controller, which I think Mike said earlier. Really? Yeah. So uh, yeah, guess guess that guy did not have a good positive experience. All well, right. There's been a lot of people that have. have. <laughs> All right, but you guys are both right, so I think you're both tied right now at two two. Yeah, I got the score. All right, so question four, not N-O-T, all capital, not working at all. I have tried everything, and I'm really angry about it. Now, here's the kicker. I bought it for my nephew, and then we were disappointed. That's video game thinking hardware. Yeah. I'm thinking that's Xbox One. They can't get it connected to the Internet or something like that. They can't get shit to download. So I'm going that game hardware. Sense. I'm going to go with that, too, because I had a problem with Xbox One when I had it. So I'll go with that. That's Logan. I don't want it to be anything other than <laughs> gaming hardware. Uh, same here. So, yeah. I don't know what it would be specifically, though. I'm going with game hardware. Let's go with game hardware to start. Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. You guys are both right with game hardware. Now, can anybody tell me exactly what it was? I'm sticking with the Xbox One. I concur. God, is it like a like a charger or something? I feel like it's not something too expensive. Right. So, uh, like a controller or... Yeah, some sort of peripheral that's a little more, you know, you know so I, guess, I don't know. All right, three seconds. I need an answer. An Xbox controller. Incorrect. I'm sorry. Wrong console. That was the PlayStation uh, Move motion controller. Damn. Oh, that's what I thought. Damn. Yeah, when you yeah. said peripheral, I was like, oh, he's right in the ballpark. Yeah. Uh, I, I was right. right. It was a controller, but. Still, still neck and neck. Three, three. Okay. Next question. Don't buy this item. It is a waste of money. All false advertising would be better to buy separate pieces of equipment. I think it's sex toy, Sean. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking it's a sex toy. False advertisement. It'd be better if you bought extra. You should be buying separate pieces. Yeah, I'm going to go with sex toy. Yeah, because I think otherwise, you know, false advertising. Well, it's a console. We know what it's going to do. I'm, I'm thinking sex toy. Yeah. All right, so sex toy, what about uh, you guys? Do we go the other way and try to uh, possibly gain the lead, or um, do you agree with yeah, them? That's, that's, that's kind of where I'm at. I feel bad just uh, always saying the same thing as them, especially since they're always saying it before us. So I don't know. <laughs> but I think with this one, it could be. So uh, I would say winners right. should go first, but since we both won, I... All right, so... Yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's all right, it's all right. Jay, go ahead. So let's go the other way. All right, so you guys are saying sex toy? Yeah, no, 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 wait, wait. Why not? Why uh, not? No, uh, uh, Mike and Sean are saying sex toy. Jay right. and Logan are saying gaming apparatus. I'm saying, right. I, I, I go with gaming apparatus, yes. Okay, all, all right. right, yeah. I appreciate you guys uh, venturing off in a different direction. Uh, Unfortunately, ah! it's not, not going to work out this time. No, that that was the, uh, there's no way you're going to guess it, so I'm not going to give you a chance to. That was the screaming O double whammy cock ring. I was going to guess that. Oh, <laughs> no, I knew that one, yeah. How is that two? To, wait a minute. To, wait a minute. How is that two pieces? Uh, well, you should see this thing. It, it was like a cock <laughs> ring with like two little vibrators on the side. 
I don't know how to break this to you, but some of us, Jay. Anyways, Corey, just go ahead. <laughs> it, it, it one wasn't for the called, bottom, one for the top? <laughs> it wasn't called the single whammy, let me just tell you that. They used to call me Driftwood. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, the next so one. you guys now have the lead, is that correct? Yep. Four okay. To th- four to three. All right, next one. Cheap knockoff. Spend your money on the real product. Well, that could be video games. Oh, that could be anything. Have, uh, yeah, that's yeah, very it, generic. Yeah, it is pretty yeah. vague. I'm sorry. I'm thinking, you know, like Mad Cats versus like, like Microsoft, yeah, like or I'm yeah. thinking like you mm-hmm. know, the rabbit like vibrator, which Corey already mentioned, or some sort of knockoff pocket vibrator. Or so, like, Sean, uh, why don't you take the lead on this one because it's fifty fifty? You know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go video game. Harder. All right, Logan. Logan what was in. your thought? Uh, well, yeah, that's just so vague. It could be, it could easily fit into either. Um, you want to just go different again? Right. I'm thinking sex toy. Just, just that's my gut feeling. So I'll let you pick. What What is it referred to in the review? Is uh, this called a thing? It says cheap knockoff. Spend your money on the real product. On the real product. God. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go sex toy. All right, so both of you guys are saying sex toy? No, what did you say, Sean? Uh, oh, no, no, oh, you, yeah, you, okay. you, yeah, you guys said video game. All right, so uh, video game is the correct answer. Damn, yeah, that was two down. <laughs> that was... Uh, I really yeah. thought you were doing sex toy on that one. Yeah, that was the uh, that was the Yorking, which is kind of like Mad Cats, I guess. Motion Plus, Remote, and Nunchuck for the Wii. So that's why they said spend it on the real, pro- or the real product, the, yeah. the Nintendo brand, I guess. See how my mind operates, Sean? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got you. I'm in tune, right. brother. You guys are you guys are rocketing ahead five to three now. Got a pants tent. <laughs> Next question. It's amazing. Don't this this review is so short, but it's all over the place. That's why I grabbed it. It's amazing. Don't get mad and punch it. It will not hold. <laughs> Now, the way you read that, Corey, it leads me to believe it's a sex toy because you got all sort of sultry on us. Yeah, maybe I did. Mm. So is that maybe she's trying punch? to throw us off, too, but, you know, I don't know. I think, I, I think, Sean, since we're in the lead, we can take a gamble here, and I'm going to say sex toy. Okay, I'll go with you on that. I'm thinking somebody punched a console. No. I, I, why would you punch a console? Why would they think you would punch a console? Have you, do you know, Jay? <laughs> uh let's see i know of three people that have done it <laughs> and no i'm not one of them <laughs> final answer I, I say we go sex toy jay but uh you go ahead i'm gonna defer to you because you are the guest all right so both well, teams are out that's such a cop out are both teams saying sex toy yes oh both yes. teams uh, son of a bitch. Oh, no. i shouldn't both. have done it both wrong. That is a Mad Cat's Rock Band 4 drum kit, is what they're talking about there. So, <laughs> oh, I could have I could have gained one. Don't get mad and punch it. Sorry. How many questions we have left, Corey? Uh, uh, there's one, two, three questions left, and then a tiebreaker if we need it. So, all right, the next right. one. This is actually two reviews, two very quick reviews. One is positive and one is negative. I'd include both of them because they're so funny. All right, the positive, a little on the pricey side but essential. And the negative is after using this product, mine grew mold. Oh, that's definitely a sex toy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> definitely a uh, sex toy. Yeah. Mm. That's I tough. Know, Mike, what do you think? I mean, what, what I mean, I, I'm going with sex. Uh, toy, so, I mean, that's I'm, no, I'm going to think that's, I think that's too low hanging fruit there. I'm going to say video game gaming, some sort of can't put my finger on what it exactly is, but I'm going to go gaming on this one. We need a consensus. The team is split. What do you think? Uh, uh, um, we got the uh, lead. I'm going to take take a gamble and go gaming to put them to really knock all right. them out. Okay, we'll go gaming then. All right, so you guys say gaming. Logan and Jay? Uh, I'm <clears> saying sex I, toy. I, I failed you last time, so we'll just go with your, your guess. Sex toy. All right, so What's you guys def- you guys deferring again, but this time... <laughs> This time you're absolutely correct. It's it's not actually a sex toy. It's a cleaner and renewing powder for a flashlight. No. So, so apparently it's too easy. I thought it was something about it. I thought you were trying to throw us off. I, I was apologize. like this. I was like, there's no way that's no, mold. So the fact that this guy's flashlight grew mold just so grossed me out that I had to include it. Fair enough. <laughs> Has your flashlight ever grown mold, Corey? No, spick and span. Are you kidding me? I take care of that thing. <laughs> It's not like it was cheap, dude. Come on. What am I, made of money? (laughs) 
You can't just have that type of personality. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. Next so they question. essentially they essentially have to they as in Jay and Logan have to answer correctly. Um, all the way through to win, one loss will tie them with us. If we win one, they're pretty much done. So, well, we also haven't been doing the can you name that specific uh, right? I was thing gonna say, yet. is there a chance to pull ahead if we get yeah, the, if we both answer the same Nothing and then has get it? been um, a household name, should we say, right yeah. now? So, <laughs> that would, none of those situations would have uh, arisen. I'm just looking, there's a possibility, Mike. This is gaming. All right, let's go. <laughs> so don't pretend like none of us knew what one. the rabbit was. Yeah, it's five for us. Yeah. Okay, we're down by one, and there's two more questions. Yes. Okay. Let's okay. do this. All right, and I say I say Logan and Jay go first this time. They have not gone first yet, so they have to answer first this time. All right, this question: This little thing changed my life. Within days, I felt muscle burn and had some minor injuries from overuse, and that was just from thirty minutes a day. Oh, I'm thinking it's a oh. Connect game or something, right? Yeah, or like the um, like the Wii Fit, like the Wii Fit yeah. board or something. Yeah, I'm going with yeah, video game. Okay, okay. So you guys are saying video game. What are you thinking, Mike? Yeah, I'm thinking it's it's one of those like you know apps like you know on the Xbox or something like that that tracks your fitness or. Okay. Either that or it's a sex toy about someone strengthening the like thigh muscles, you know, to make a Kegels. tiger fit. Yeah. <laughs> what, do, what do you think? What do you, what do you think? I was going to say video because I video game because I I'm, it sounds like the connect to me. Oh, this little thing, though. God damn these people <laughs> being so fucking yeah. big. You know, that sounds like what, a sex toy, doesn't what it? What did they say? They said video games. Yes, yeah, so uh, they sex said toy? video game. Yeah. Mm. Let's make it interesting, Sean. All right, sex yeah. story. Yep. All right, you guys are making it interesting, but you're also ah. you're also incorrect. Now, since uh, this is a possibility, do you guys think that you could possibly guess the specific product? <laughs> okay, Logan, I right? am thinking it's the Wii Fit board or whatever they the, the balance board they had there. What's it called? Yeah, I don't I don't know the exact name of it because so I think because that was advertised. Use it half an hour a day to stay fit. I say I, I that feels right to me. That feels good. All righty, then. Let's go Wii Fit board. All right, the Wii Fit balance board? Yep. You fuckers are correct. (laughs) 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 Wow, that that puts you guys in the lead now by two (laughs) points, actually. Seven to five. So there's, what, one question left, and then we could name it two? Right. 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 All right, so, so this is the last question. This is not for everyone. If you're looking to get one, you may want to try it before you buy it. It's awkward... And it hurts your eyes and neck. Now, I want I want Jay and Logan to go first because uh, you guys went first majority of the time, so it's only fair. Logan, what's your thoughts? I, I think that could very easily be gaming hardware. I'm thinking VR, some kind of VR. VR. Yep. All right, yes, so you guys are going gaming yep. hardware. Gaming okay. hardware. Well, um, Sean, if we agree, then we essentially lose, right? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're well, not good. Not necessarily, because we could actually get the two points. Awkward and hurts your eyes and neck. Is there a sex toy that hurts your eyes or anything that involves your eyes? I guess it depends on who you're using it with, right? Yeah, yeah I would say. I, oh. I don't know if it's, I don't, God damn it, I don't want to say shit. Either way, it doesn't matter. Well, it does matter because if we get it right, then we get at least a point and we won't be so far behind. But if we're wrong, then they win. So, And then you can pick exactly what it was possibly. Yeah, you guys could still pull this out. All right, well, let's go with the uh, the video game there. Okay. All right, so you're both saying video game. You're both correct. Now, who can guess what it is? So, uh, so we Sean can only Mike, tie here. You guys have six. Logan and Jay have no, eight. No, they have eight. eight. We have eight, yeah. to f- eight to six, yep. And there is a tie break. Tie it out. Yep. yep. Um, <sighs> can we ask for hints? <laughs> um... <laughs> Let's see, is, is it that, out yet? Is the product released to mass market at this particular? See, time? I thought this was yeah. a trick question. No, it's been out for quite some time. Uh, the, here, here's the, uh, the the part of the question you really want to pay attention to. It's awkward and it hurts your eyes and neck. I'll give you. I'll give you a hint. It's not a product that has come to the market within the past three years. Right. So it's not VR. Okay. Hurts your eyes and neck, Sean. And I'm, it's, I'm trying it's to think. Three what years old. Uh, 
This is essentially whoever says it first wins it, I think. If, if uh, might dawn on somebody. I'm going to need an answer within the next 10 seconds, though. Uh, connect, because Connect hurt your eyes. Th- something 3D related. Something 3D. Virtual uh, Boy. Uh, Jay. Just... Jay's correct. With the virtual <laughs> <boy>. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so Jay has won a prize for um, Holy Headshot. Congratulations, yes. Chris. Take a victory lap, guys. Sorry, Lizzie. Apologize for failing you. <laughs> we dropped the ball. Or the vibrator. Well, hopefully we didn't drop the ball. Oh, I feel bad now. <laughs> Speaking of ball, the next question was actually about anal beads, so uh, your, your mind was in the right spot. <laughs> Well, that was a lot of fun, Corey. I appreciate you putting that together for us. My pleasure. Um, and don't say I don't sacrifice for the show because from now on, whenever I view, uh, you know, Facebook, my little side banner ads that are targeted, you know, oh, they're all going to uh, yep. so many dildos. <laughs> I've, I've already started to see them. <laughs> so you're welcome, listeners. Oh, you may want to clear your cookies. <laughs> All right, so we got some notable releases this week. We'll get through pretty quick. Um, majority of these come out on Friday, October 7th, which is a little different. So we have Mafia 3 out this Friday. Um, and I put a sh- uh, news item here because people are going to be expecting reviews before they buy. Well, 2K Games have not sent out any review copies of this game to the media until it's released. So they're holding this one back. Okay, so Polygon put out a thing saying, you know, our review will be later in the week. That's scary, but I mean, Doom did the same thing. So yeah. right. Maybe they just don't want the story getting spoiled ahead of time. They just want to keep it close to their chest. Who knows? Yeah. And it's a pretty deep game. I mean, and, and I mean, not just story-wise, but as far as how it's supposed to work, uh, you know, tracking your decisions and stuff, too. So that, that's a tough one. Yeah, Destiny did the same thing in Doom as well. Yeah. So. Um, other releases this week, Paper Mario uh, Color Splash out October 7th. I'm seeing TV commercials for that. That looks pretty interesting. Um, Gears of War 4 Ultimate Edition. If you want to pony up the 99 bucks, like we mentioned last week in our Dillagaff, you can play the game on Friday. And lastly, Warhammer End Times Vermintide. Has, have anybody tried any of these that are... Or ordered these or tried them? I'd like no. to. I'd like to look. I'm looking at Warhammer right now. I might give that a shot. Now there well, that's was been a, on a PC for a while, so this has come yeah. to the consoles. Yeah, and there was a beta, or it, it said demo, but then when I downloaded it, it said beta. So I don't know if it's still um, playable or not. So um, for I know on one, and I'm not sure about PC. So. I planned on picking up Paper Mario Color Splash. It, it, like I planned for a while to that that was going to be my last Wii U game. I was going to put my Wii U to bed after that, but because it looked very Paper Mario esque, obviously. But from what I hear, it's got some hints of Sticker Star, which sucks Oof. shit through a straw. I don't know if anybody else played that, but <laughs> chunky uh, shit too, right? Yeah, I don't yeah. know if I'm going to get it anymore. So, all right, well, let's move on to the news. Unless anybody has anything else to report on those. Just quick question for you, Mike. You did not order Mafia 3. No, I'm wavering uh, whether to get Mafia 3 on PC via uh, CD keys for like 32 bucks. Mm-hmm. And um, Gears I have not pre-ordered as well because, um, we should mention this right now, there was a rather pricing snafu on Target for Forza Horizon 3. Yes, now, there could, was. You could get Forza Horizon 3 for $20 plus the VIP pass for another 10 bucks. I jumped right on that, ordered it, got my codes, and I'm good to go. So I know that was just a pricing error, but we are going in a trend now where games are being discounted or going on sale very quickly after launch. And might just start holding off, especially with Gears. I mean, how many Gears items are we being flooded with, whether it's consoles, headsets, controllers? They want everybody and their mother to play this game. So therefore, I think Gears 4 is going to be heavily discounted within weeks because they just want this to sell and sell and sell. I don't so, think they're going to do it within weeks, but I do think that you'll see it within a few months. Yeah. So well, especially if, if you can wait that out. long, I think you can wait. I don't think it's going to be months. I mean, we can yeah. disagree on that, but I yeah. think you're going to see a sale on that pretty quick. No, I think it'll be interesting to see that. You'll see a holiday sale, for sure. 
There will oh, definitely yeah. be a holiday sale. And yes. if there if there was another like Mafia Three, I guess is kind of competition, but it's not. There's no real multiplayer aspect. Am I am I wrong in saying that? I'm not sure. Think. So I mean, it doesn't have any direct multiplayer online competition. You know, when it when it launches. So I don't for, know for which one. For Gears. There's not going to there's not another shooter coming out around the same time that could take money away from mm-hmm. Gears. So I think Call that would of Duty be a, is coming in a few weeks, right? True. Maybe we'll see a discount then. Anyways, uh, that's my position right now. Maybe I will give in to peer pressure once everybody starts playing Horde mode and saying how good it is. But uh, for right now, I have not pre-ordered it. And we're going to yeah. circle back to Gears in just a few minutes. So let's move and, on. And I did pre-order it. So just the standard edition, not the not the $100 digital bend you over friggin' edition. Uh, so moving on, a Brazilian uh, ratings company has listed a uh, listing for a Bulletstorm full clip edition for PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. And interesting enough, this is going to be published by Gearbox. Um, EA and People Can Fly, uh, the original developer, have not confirmed this at all. So still speculation, but possibly sometime in 2017 this could be coming out. This is like the worst kept secret in gaming right now. The next, the next bullet storm. Didn't someone find something on a thumb drive at well, PAX? Yeah, with at the PAX, E3. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And I am all over this. They re-released Bullet Storm on the current consoles. I am all over it because I the thoroughly enjoyed the single-player game, and the multiplayer on it was a ton of fun. So, all right. Uh, PSVR unboxing video has come out on um, various sites. And if you look at it, I guess it's coming on October 13th. $400 uh, price point still. And inside the box, it comes with the headset, the processor box, wired stereo headphones, all the cables you need, and a demo disc which features trials for 18 different games. Jay, I know you canceled your pre-order this week. I did. I only had the standard one that didn't come with the controls. It wasn't the, um, uh, you know, the the complete whatever you call it, the one that came with the yeah, uh, with the, the camera thing. and the and then the move. Um, so that was a piece of it, and the fact that it just I don't see myself using it that much. So mm-hmm. now, Logan, are you into the VR thing at all? I have my psvr pre-ordered uh i did get the uh full set so it will come with the camera and the new move controllers and uh psvr worlds um and i haven't done a lot with vr yet uh, but i'm pretty excited about this and i i'm just excited to get on the ground floor with it and as the you know the reviews editor for bago games um me and a couple other guys are getting these headsets and we're going to just do a full you know coverage of all of the launch games and just all all of what this is going to be like this you know consumer focused product so i'm excited to see what comes of all of this i don't know if the games are going to be great i don't know you know i I don't know what it looks like and what this is going to be like but i'm excited for whatever this ends up being now i'm going to throw you a bone here and when you make this the big podcast bucks and they start rolling in Remember that I threw you this idea. You guys should do a podcast just all like decked out in like VR gear. Like even though you're not like it's just an audio format. You have the gear on. You're talking about it. Are you sweating halfway through? Oh, my God. I'm dying. I can't wait for this podcast to be <laughs> over. You know, are you, waving, are you waving the move sticks around? You know, I think that's what you should do. That's what they yeah. should do. They should make a, a VR game that is you have to podcast. It's like podcast yes. simulator. <laughs> exactly. Podcast simulator. That sounds like You'll ideal. get rich off that idea. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's going to be good for you. Let me write that down here. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you can drink lots paper, beer. Lots of paper for that. Make sure to pu- <laughs> make sure to cover up your mic every time you burp or fart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, let's segue over here to the PlayStation Plus free games for October. We get on the PS4 Resident Evil, as well as Transformers Devastation. On the PS3, Mad Riders and From Dust. And on the Vita, we have Code Realize, Guardian of Rebirth, and Actual Sunlight. I know people on the Twitters were very stoked about Resident Evil and the Transformers game. Hell yeah. A lot of positive um, tweets about that. 
very yeah, excited about the Transformers. I wanted to pick them. that up. I just never pulled the trigger on it, and now I'll be able to get it. And, and I, that's one I didn't expect, um, because uh, especially with it being Activision. Mm-hmm. Corey, did you have some thoughts there? I was probably going to pick up both of them. It's it's been a while since I've been interested in in both um, uh, free games for the month. But yeah, both of these look interesting. So uh, like 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 he said, I was going to pick up Transformers, and then I heard like you know lukewarm reviews about it, about how plain it was, and this seems like a pretty good price point for it. So I'll get I'll be getting it. <laughs> All right, let's move over to some Xbox news here. Um, I have not gone back to Recore since I first started playing it. I should, but I think I will wait to October 5th. And Maybe they should have released this game on October 5th because on this particular day, they're releasing a significant upgrade to Recore. In this update, this is a quote, you will experience decreased loading times, see audio and visual improvements, and notice improvements to issues you may have experienced with waypoints, achievement tracking, collision locations, checkpoints, and respawn points. So yeah, maybe just fucking release that game on October fifth and not release it early. But uh, I do enjoy the game. Like I said before, it's kind of just a standard uh, type of game. There's nothing wrong with it. It's not doing anything new or revolutionary there. But um, I guess it's good that they're they're addressing, they're listening, and they're also telling you to go ahead and do the update for Windows ten. And they're saying to take this update to help all games on Windows uh, gaming, especially with preloading. If you know how to use Windows 10 and check for your updates, go ahead and do that and take your update. But, Jay, not during the podcast. Uh, No. No. Uh, File size preloading in day one patch for Gears 4. So we were just talking about that. If you have the disk, there will be a day one patch, about 11 gigabytes. If you do not have the disk, um, it will just all be built into whatever you have. In the digital, it's around 54.6 gigs. Jesus, these games are getting large. But if you have this on PC, because there is stuff in there for 4K, that download is 80 gigabytes. Whoa. Yes, sir. Um, And you can start preloading now. Have you done that, Jay? I'm not sure if it's preloaded on my console or not. I'm going to have to check when I go back upstairs. Um, Mm Mm-hmm. And I have to preload it on my X, uh, yeah, on my um, PC PS4. also. Yeah, my PS4. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> no, I got to try and get that uh, uh, preloaded on the uh, on the PC also. You have eighty gigabytes of space. I have a two terabyte uh, hard drive as um, my H drive, so yes. All right. Very good. And, uh, Sean, do you have any interest with Gears on PC? Yeah, actually, I do. I, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it for sure, but that man has fucking huge. Jeez, mm. that's a big How long one. will 80 gigabytes take you to download? Oh, it won't take me long to download. I'll just have to clear out a whole bunch of shit off my hard drive just to make sure that I have enough room for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you have a laptop, correct? Yeah, I have a laptop right now. I just actually ordered my rig. My rig will be here the 16th, I think. Um, that's got a terabyte drive with it and an SSD, so I should be building good yourself. Then. Or uh, no, I'm having somebody build it for me. Nice. All right, and the last bit of news here: are some new Xbox One backwards compatibility games um, released on the 27th of September. There was Call of Duty: World at War, Fun Town, Mahjong, and Cleverment Experiment. And I can't believe they put this one out. E4 Every Extend Extra Extreme. Oh, my God, I was waiting for that one. (laughs) And um, just the other day, there's uh, two here that I think are really good games. Well, I shouldn't say I think. Other people think. Lost Odyssey, which Jay's son, uh, Jamie, really loves. Uh, Toy Story 3, which I played, which I didn't think was a bad game at all. And how would you pronounce this last one here? Guanj? I'm going to go with it. Yeah, go with Um, it. Yeah. So Lost Odyssey and Toy Story 3, I think those are... uh, Pretty good titles. I heard that the sales for Lost Odyssey were uh, skyrocketing. And, of course, GameStop upped their price on the used game. Of course. Sons of bitches. 
Guys, let's get some plugs out of the way right away. Uh, the 40 Cast, my other podcast that I am a co host on, we celebrated 300 episodes the other day. Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. I can't take too much credit. I think I've only been on for, I don't know, 50 or 60. And um, Denny from Tap the Craft was our guest, who was in a 40 Cast alumni. Uh, unfortunately, Vic Joe couldn't make it, he was a little tired from a busy day of work, which is understandable. But we had some good times, uh, not really our usual format. We do some news articles at the end, but uh, mostly just reminiscing on uh, the 40 cast history. So lots of fun. Check that out. And uh, Gamers Unscripted was this week. We tried to have Chris from uh, Ragtag Studios on, who is the developer of uh, Raise the Dead. But uh, Chris had some uh, family emergencies this week, so couldn't make it. So we had Bernard, a.k.a. Dan from Dad's Getting Grounded on the show. So um, listen to that. And Sid Bolton also took the place of uh, Zion Tane this week. So always good to talk to Sid. I listened to that today, and it was excellent. That was one of the better ones. I really enjoyed it. So Cool. Uh, Jay, how about yourself? Uh, I am going to put it out there. Um I had gone down to New Hampshire. My grandmother is not doing very well, so I went down to visit her. So I want to give her a shout-out. Uh, she just turned 92 on Monday, and um, she's kind of in rough shape at this point in time. Uh, but on the way back, um, I picked up some stone 20th anniversary, because this is their 20th anniversary, so everything has the 20th anniversary uh, bottle cap on it. And I Dude, love this. Was this the 20th anniversary? It was, and I love their smoked porter. And um, I grabbed one of the bottles tonight and was going to open it up and was looking at it. And um, they're retiring the smoked porter this year. Uh, That was the second beer they ever came up with. And um, they're retiring it this year. So if you want some of the smoked porter, get your ass out there and get some now for uh, for that – that's a very good beer. I know Denny would agree with me, and I know Devious Mr. Matt would agree with me. I don't know much about beer, but smoked anything. That sounds like it's for food and not beer. But uh, They actually the use a peat when they, when they um, uh, brew it, and they put it in, and that's what gives it the smoked flavor. So it's not an actual uh, you know, like liquid smoke. No, they didn't drop a like cigarette in there? It. Right, yeah. They, didn't, they definitely didn't drop a cigarette in there. That probably would be Budweiser. But uh, – <laughs> <laughs> Why do you got to go like that? See? Why do you got to be like that? He's not wrong. All right. Thank you, Corey. Anything, Thank anything you. else, Jay? Uh, no, just just that. Like I said, that and my family for you know being behind me. It's been a rough week. So. All right. Who wants to go next? Logan? Sure, I'll go. Uh, well, uh, like I said, I am here kind of to promote the Indie Insider podcast. That's the new podcast I'm hosting over uh, – presented by Black Shell Media. And, uh, again, I use that to talk to indie devs, publishers, uh, industry professionals about their stories and projects they're working on and their advice for others. Uh, so go check that out. That's on iTunes, Google Play. Um, it's on the Black Shell Media blog. Uh, it'll actually be on Bago Games, uh, where I am also the senior reviews editor. So you can find my work over there. And uh, that's kind of what's taking up my time right now. And then, you know, the regular day-to-day stuff. Uh, the Indie Insider podcast is every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And so uh, we're recording this on Sunday, so we have a new episode tomorrow. Great. And what's the name one more time? Uh, Indie Insider Podcast. Indie Insider. Don't go uh, inside indie like I just did. That's why I asked you. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Other word, Indie Insider. You got it. All right. Yeah. Very good. Corey? Uh, yeah, while well, we're on the uh, Bago tip, you can follow me on Twitter at Catwood. Follow Bago Games on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, I'm their social media manager, so it makes me look good when more people join. Um, also, uh, keep an eye on Bago Games. We're going to have an extensive uh, PlayStation VR coverage, like Logan mentioned earlier. So uh, Correct. you're going you're gonna to want to check that out. We have quite a few people who actually have it. I, I'm jealous of you guys being able to jump on early. Um, I'm going to be working on uh, – I'm going to be starting my next uh, Gamer Parent piece very soon. And uh, actually today, uh, if you like our uh, hump day haikus that we do, we actually kind of you know, spitballing on Slack um, birthed a new idea for a very similar feature. Our fellow writer, uh, Josh Nichols, is going to be uh, helming this. Uh, but it's, it's going to be a new recurring feature. It's going to be uh, short – 
funny and booze related. So I imagine if you listen to this podcast, it might might capture your attention with the humor and the booze. So check that out. Awesome. Sean? Uh, I'd just like to shout out um, you guys, of course, here for having me on here. And then I'm going to shout out the Rated Arc podcast, which I do on Saturday nights at uh, 1030. We, they release usually between Monday and Tuesday. It's all about Arc. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, you can check us out there. And then shout out the gaming group that I have, uh, the Renegades of Funk, my, uh, my Arc server. So You guys never commented when I put the Funk song in a couple of weeks ago. Very disappointed. Uh, it was a good song. I, 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 they're too busy listening to the reply <laughs> all right anything else sean nope that'll cut good. you off there no that's okay oh and you know what throw us some reviews on itunes you know it wouldn't it wouldn't kill you that's you know yeah that would be nice is, you know let us know if we suck let us know if we're great let us, you know anything would be good so it's kind of it's kind of cool to get some reviews so we see where we stand with everybody just a handful I, of stars just throw them out just be just be gracious with your stars Yep. Uh, so, of course, want to thank all the other podcasts that do their stuff uh, during the week or biweekly. Uh, keeps us going, keeps us motivated to uh, make this show bigger and better. And um, I want to give out kudos to Denny again from Tap to Craft. He said some very nice words for us and uh, the podcast here. This was, you know, off air after the 40 cast was um, done recording, but it was um, great to hear the um what he thinks of the show and hopefully other people think of us in the same light, which is, you know, prepared, professional, fun and things like that. So, again, Denny, thanks for those words. It keeps me uh, motivated to uh, keep going with this thing. And uh, just real quick on the VR tip, I played Oculus this week. I think it's amazing. I think it's great, but I don't think it's for me. So if anybody wants an Oculus Rift, get at me because I am selling mine. I might wow, have would... my hand up. I'm not sure. That was fast. <laughs> yep. Um, like I said, there was no issues with it. Um, I just think um, the taking it on, taking it off, storing it somewhere. You know, I don't have a setup in my office where I can easily get behind my computer. And so, therefore, I have to leave it on my desk and I don't want it on my desk. Um, so, just those kind of logistic things. I just think right now in my current setup, it's it's not ideal for me. But uh, the things I did try out, um, and I'll go maybe more in depth on another episode, um, I thought were really great. The setup, you know, the the program at Oculus was great. Uh, really, nothing bad to say about it. Just I just know in my heart of hearts that I'm not going to use it as much as I should. So I'd rather have it go to a home where someone's going to use it. So there you go. That's all I got to say about that. <clears throat> so Jay, do the- I actually have one last thing I want to ask everybody? Um, has yeah. anybody done the uh, Twitch Prime yet? Yes. I have not done all the way through yet with the, um, you know, subscribing to someone for free and things like that. But right. I haven't gotten that far either. I just linked them. Yep. I linked, I linked my accounts. Uh, and if anybody's wondering what's going on, um, they had TwitchCon and uh, Amazon now owns Twitch. And uh, they put uh, – they now have Twitch Prime, which you link your Twitch account with Amazon. And if you have Prime, uh, when you – you get a free free – subscription to you know to a, a channel each month you get one free subscription that you can put in that you normally would have to pay for i believe and then on top of that also when you watch you can earn some kind of points or coins or something like that which you can use to put yep. towards stuff and they also uh, give you some discount on some games and whatnot and there's also actually a couple of games right now that that are normally i believe like twenty dollars you can get for free or ten to twenty dollars which you can get free now so I, I forgot to mention that during the uh during the news so i guess i'll put it in here during our uh you know shout outs um because uh it's me being a prime member it's actually pretty decent so yeah, head on over to uh, twitchprime.com, and they'll explain everything that Jay just mentioned. Yes, so check that out. And uh, until next time, the same beta time, same beta channel. And uh, who knows, we'll be on with us next time. See ya! Love and you. Love and you. Long, long when you was like love of the dead. It was like love of the dead. Love in you was like love in the dead. Love in you was like love in the dead. Love in you was like love in the dead. Was like love in the dead.
still pooping? You nope, made... not not pooping. Well, go back and finish. Jesus, we don't want you to fin- just come back without wiping. What the hell? <laughs>